Welcome back to Iron Thing Invasion, Book 6, Session 2, as we continue our journey here to the end of the adventure. Last time, we started back up in Book 6 and did a lot of uh, tying up of loose ends. We started out in the Fangwood, talked to all the various fey NPCs there, Groger and uh, Marina at the Waterfall and all of that. Went to Long Shadow, talked to the mayor, talked to um, Jessup, talked to his son Rizarin. Some of you went to Kragadan and talked to the the king there or the prince there and uh, Carbert and Lightbrand did some shopping and all that stuff, which we handled off air. And then everybody reconvened at Fort Trevally and talked to Cobb Greenleaf and a whole lot of just meeting up with everybody throughout the AP, keeping everybody up to date on what's been going on. And uh, at Fort Trevale, you were given a bit of a report from Cobb about what had been going on, saying that the Legion had taken a, a strange alteration in their battle tactics. They'd taken a more defensive route all of a sudden. He wasn't sure why, but you, as the people in the know, would be aware that uh, the time frame would correspond roughly to when you would have gotten the Sardonic Shard so you suspect that the Legion knows that you have it and that they are a bit troubled by that fact and they're trying to avoid spreading themselves too thin in anticipation of a potential counterattack. You also were met with a messenger from Westland Gavrik who basically told you that he'd like to have a war summit with a bunch of people who might aid Nirmathas's plight and he basically just said, Tell me a time, tell me a place, and we will all meet up and we will have ourselves a a discussion here and see if we can't get some allies. And so you guys discussed a little bit and decided you'd meet up at Fort Trevale in a week's time. So everybody from this summit arrived either a couple days in advance or most of them pretty much just the day prior. And you were introduced to several individuals, Westland Gavrik himself, Sintila Savros, the follower of Calistrad, Sir Doc Santine from Last Wall, uh, Obsic Shalehammer from Kragadan, and Gossamer, representative of Genduin and the Fangwood. And the the first opening day, you could call it, I suppose, uh, went, went by pretty uneventfully. You guys were all able to listen in on a couple conversations. Uh, two of you gleaned some useful information from those conversations. And then on the following morning things really began at the summit it was politics as usual and lots of quips and couched insults between certain people who didn't get along and you were all given the first opportunity to roll some influence checks on your fellow attendees and overall it went pretty well i have it marked here in my log that we have one success against obsic shalehammer two against Gosmer and two against Sir Doc Santine. So not a bad start for day one. Day two, while it started out with a dull recap of what happened with day one, things got a little bit more interesting there around midday. And that is where we are going to jump back in for this session. As a loud voice outside the meeting room exclaims that whoever's out there isn't supposed to be there. They're not supposed to to go in. And shortly after the doors burst open, and you all spotted a battered troop of Molthuni warriors. So, let me go ahead and put some stuff on the map here. Roll for initiative. Yeah, I was like, when he said that, I was like, oh, yeah. attack, Garen. <laughs> Turncoat. He's Traitor. a turncoat. Traitor! Kill him! Stab him in the back! So, <laughs> a group of eight individuals enter the summit room. Any of you who'd like can roll me a knowledge nobility or a knowledge geography. I will probably do knowledge nobility. You, you say you had nobility and geography, Jason? Correct. All right, my knowledge nobility is a natural one. Are I you sure you're game. noble? I hate this game. Kieran knows nothing of the. I I ended last session 
with two concurrent natural ones. Those were the last two rolls. And then I did a natural well, one to start that. You know what? I'm done, guys. Have wow, my roll's pretty bad, too. <laughs> well, it's been a good run, Sarah. I'm glad we had the chance to play as long as we did. Have I mean, my roll was good. I just, you know, I only have a plus four. Kieran's Same. sitting there picking his nose, and he goes, Mothoon, what's <laughs> that? <laughs> I don't know what Mothoon is. <laughs> I've never heard of Mothoon in my life. <laughs> oh, I'm All so right. stupid. <laughs> so... We have a 16 from Oren, a 13 from Kieran, a 15 from Gideon, a 23 from Jessup. Kieran, you are getting a bonus to this because you are from Malthoon. And the DC is not exceptionally high. So Jessup and Kieran are actually able to glean some information out of this. You both recognize, and I guess it actually makes sense that it would be the two of you, one from Malthoon and Jessup, you'd be aware of this because the livery, the, the sigils on these soldiers belong to the Mindspin province, which borders near Mythos along the Nesbian Plains. And uh, troops from this particular province uh, pretty frequently invade the lightly defended south of near Mythos. So it makes sense that the two of you would be aware of this, Jessup. You specifically from near Mythos, you'd, you'd know of conflicts that have occurred in the past with troops from the Mindspin province. As soon as these soldiers enter the room and everybody takes a moment to understand who they are, tensions immediately rise. You see there are a couple ranger guards that are just in this room. They're not really taking part in the discussion, but they are just here as as bodyguards for the individuals. All of them draw weapons, and in turn, the Malthuni soldiers draw weapons. And it looks like a skirmish is very quickly about to erupt between these party crashers and Westland's guards. Is there anything that you would like to do before things get interesting? Uh, yeah, uh, probably. So where, where did they charge in, Jason, from? Oh, down there. I see him now. Yep. So there's eight of them. They just came right through the door. And there are several guards on the uh, other side of the chamber and, and either the left, right, and back of the chamber that are drawing weapons. Are there weapons drawn? The Malthunis? The Malthunis drew their weapons upon seeing the rangers draw their weapons. Uh, yeah. Jessup probably would speak up immediately. He'd stand right up out of the chair and, please stop. Not sure what quite's going on here, and uh, we don't need bloodshed. Why are you intruding? Alright, roll me a... This sounds like a diplomacy. Roll me a diplomacy check. I could say slightly raspier if you want me to do intimidation. Well, that was another option, but you'd probably oh. prefer diplomacy anyways. Uh, it's the same rule anyway. So it's a 31, 31 for diplomacy slash intimidation. Okay. Just as you stand up, you kind of hold your hands out, one in the direction of the Molthuni soldiers, one in the direction of the rangers behind you. The rangers seeing this, they hesitate and lower their weapons immediately. You've You've earned enough respect that they see you as like probably their... If it weren't for Cobb or Westland, you'd you'd probably basically be their leader at this point. So they immediately capitulate to your to your uh, asking for diplomacy, and seeing that they haven't attacked, the Malthuni soldiers also slowly begin to lower their weapons as well, and this gives an opportunity for one of the individuals at the front of the pack of Molthunis to step forward. This individual here, which I will blow up a bit so you can see what she looks like. So from this battered Molthuni rank here, uh, this tall woman steps forward and there's an air of confidence about her. Her uniform, Kieran and uh, Jessup, you are able to recognize, is very regal. It actually, the, the markings on it are of a general lord, one of the heads of the Malthuni state. She drops a bloody sack to the ground and severed hobgoblin ears spill out of it. And then she speaks. We come under the flag of Pale to bring you this gift. Many of my soldiers paid the highest price for it. I am General Lord Catra Sabine, daughter of General Muriel Sabine, granddaughter of General Lord Marley Tavanus. I do not look for bloodshed. 
I ignored the horror set upon our neighbors, and now my people in my land pay the price for my arrogance, crushed beneath the boot of the Iron Fang Legion. My fellow general lords in Canaret argue how, or even if, to intercede. Meanwhile, people die, my people and yours, and unless we put aside our war, we shall both be overrun. Rumors claim you know where the Legion hides, and if your arm knows where to strike, I may be willing to place my sword in your hand. As soon as she finishes speaking, Weslin angrily gets from his chair and he shouts out, he says, Get her out of here! And everybody else, all the other rangers, again, they they raise their weapons in anticipation for being ordered to attack. And then Santilla, Savarus... She immediately speaks up and she demands that the entire council vote on the inclusion of General Lord Sabine, as she too is affected by the war. There's a little bit of back and forth between Westland and San and Santilla. He protests and she emphatically suggests that the forest marshal should abstain from his vote due to his clear bias. And maybe to some of you, remarkably, she is able to, begrudgingly, but talk him into accepting her proposal. Wait, who was that? Santilla Savros, right here. Sitting right next to Weslin. You know, the warmonger. The oh, yeah. yeah. The warmonger. This is, this is, I really wish I did was dead. <laughs> so she talks Weslin down and convinces him that he shouldn't vote. And then the room proceeds to go around each person at the table places a vote on whether or not these Molthuni soldiers should be included in these proceedings. First up, Sir Doc Santine votes in favor of including Catra Sabine. Gossamer votes against her. Obsic also votes against her. And Santilla votes in favor, leaving the table at a impasse. She looks to the four of you and says, as the hosts of this summit. It looks like it falls to you to decide who stays and who does not. Well, what's your vote? I suggest the four of you pool your vote as one, else this whole voting system sort of falls apart. Might we recluse ourselves to vote, or would you like us to do open discussion? Oh yes, if you'd like to speak with uh, the General Lord one-to-one, get to know her more yourself, we can certainly spare some time, can't we, Weston? And she looks over and Weston just kind of nods again. It's not very happy about the situation, but you have seen that she has, uh, Santilla has something of a silver tongue herself. I think that might be best, if you might give us but a few minutes, we we shall speak with, S- what's her name, Sabine? No, not Sabine. Catra the... Sabine. Oh, her, it is Sabine. Okay. We might speak with speak with Miss Sabine and come to a conclusion that way. Are we in agreement? And he'll look to the others. And this is just for them to be able to join the summit? Yes, because Westland ordered that they be thrown out. And Scintilla immediately interjected and said that she would like to have a vote to see if we include Catra Sabine in the war summit as a potential ally. Jessup will kind of look over at Kieran and he'll nod, but you can tell he's not overly probably enthused. I think Oren would do the same. He'll 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 hear hear he'll hear it out, but and how did Opsic vote again? Was it a no? So Santilla and Serdak voted in favor. Gosimer and Opsic voted against, and that is why it came to you as a tiebreaker. Yeah. So what Kieran's proposing is that we step out of the room and have a conversation. Yes. He was just advocating that we talk amongst the four of us, but I guess Santilla said we could talk with Sabine, so I don't know. Yeah, Santilla assumed that you were asking to discuss directly with Catra about her inclusion, since you're the hosts. Which would be fine with him, too. He just wants to be able to speak to the others in private. Further game question, though. They didn't have any opening arguments. They went straight to voting. What do you mean? So, like, I don't know. I've at like council meetings I've met uh, or been attended. They'll be like, "Okay, we're going to vote on this issue. Are there any opening statements?" And then people give like their base opinion or why. I would agree. Like why Gossamer voted no and why Opsic voted no. Why Scintilla voted yes. Why Sir Dak 
voted yes. You kind of like, these are my thoughts. And then there's normally an ordered rebuttal where one, like where council members get the chance to like respond to a thing and then closing statements and then voting. Yeah, so like, there did was, that happen? There was no, there was no like rebuttals, but when each person voted, they would have given their thoughts on the matter. So Santilla Savros would have basically said that we are all in a dire position with the Iron Fang Legion. There is no reason not to include as many allies as possible if indeed Molthun is willing to join forces. Sir Doc kind of mentioned similar sentiments, but he came at it from the angle of Molthun is also suffering now from the Iron Fang Legion just as Nirmathos has been for some months so the people of Molthun should not be held accountable for the actions of their leaders in the past. And so if the people of Molthun can benefit from an alliance of destroying the Legion, then for the greater good, it is ideal to have the Molthuni allies present in the proceedings. Uh, Obsit came at it from the side of Molthun has been besieging Kragadan for two years now. He holds no love for them as a nation, uh, even though there's sort of a truce between the two. The tensions are still quite high between the two, and he has no interest in really speaking to such individuals, I guess you could say. Um, and you get the sense that Gosumer just uh, voted completely on a whim. <laughs> Classic, <laughs> Faye. I Classic. Love it. She probably like flipped a coin. She probably thought that this was the more interesting result. It was like the last to vote. I just thought it'd be funny to let the heroes decide. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. the first vote that was cast was in favor. And so she's like, ha ha. <laughs> no. <laughs> nice. Okay. Contrarian. Yeah. So if, if they want us to make a unified vo- vote, Kieran wants to speak with the other three to make sure that we're all on the same page about what we decide. Uh, I agree. If you want us to vote as one, then I would request time for us to discuss amongst ourselves and unite as one. Time to delineate, as it were. Yep. Santella makes a motion as if... It's almost as if she's excusing you, even though she has no authority. (laughs) That's almost what it seems like. And the four of you are able to convene outside of the room. As you do, Kieran, you notice that the armor, the pauldron worn by one of these individuals has the house sigil of Teralia, but you have never seen this person before in your life. Well, that's weird. He punches the dude in the face. (laughs) Get that off your armor! (laughs) You don't deserve to wear it! I would like a quick aside with Weslin Garvik if it's possible. Um, If there's no, if he doesn't respond to like being pulled aside slightly, then he won't. But Gideon wants a moment with him if that's possible. Sure. Yeah, you could you could probably manage that. He's just going to try to close close the sides of the room if that makes sense with his presence, and he's going to reassure Weslin Garvik. Whatever we decide, know that my heart is with the people of Nirmathos. I pledged my shield a long time ago promise you, the others and I will do what is best for the Nimathi people. I hope no matter what we decide, you can believe that. He nods and he says, I decided to give you the position of host of this summit, so I suppose my outburst was premature. I am not the one in authority here. I will place my trust in you for now, and hopefully things do not fall apart. And Gideon will just nod. I trust that they will not. He sits back down in his seat and crosses his arms. (laughs) Pouts. (laughs) Yeah, as as one would. As one would. What a baby. (laughs) Let's let's not undermine the fact that Molthun has been the aggressor. I mean, we could delineate further as far as... No, 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 no. They're just taking back their land. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, mean, Nirmathos is the one that off. It's not like... It's funny because no, no, we're gonna we're gonna put that aside. Yeah. We're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> all right. So, the rest of you are able to. So all of the most those three soldiers would leave the room, and you would be able to either go off on your own and just talk amongst the four of you, or if you'd like, you could also speak with Katra Sabine. However, you'd like to do that. 
question. Did the Malthuni start the Iron Fang Legion? Like, I know the Iron Fang Legion, like, worked for them, but did they, like, form the Iron Fang Legion? Malthun has a number of monster regiments that they hired. The Iron Fang Legion is one of them, but it's not so much like they found monsters with the express purpose of using them against Nirmathos. It was more like a, this will bolster our military and our military just happens to be going against Nirmathos. So I, I wouldn't really say that they formed the Iron Fang Legion. They more so just hired them. The Iron Fang Legion was kind of a mercenary band prior to Molthun's involvement. Uh, it was just smaller at that time. And also, though, too, the Imperial Army no longer uh, makes use of any monster regiments, if I'm not mistaken. That's because most of them disappeared. Yes, uh, most of them disappeared, or there was also the incident uh, involving uh, Elwood way back when, uh, Fort Ramgate, was it? Yes. It also involved Sarah's character, um, what was her name, Niari. So that, it went bad. It went really bad. Yeah. And the monster regiments proved unable to be ordered or controlled by Imperial leaders and generals. So it was ineffective. So what, did they? Kind of. Not really, but kind of. No. All right. So we got that little column A, little column B situation. Got it. Yeah. My my preferred method would be the four of us find ourselves a private uh, room here, uh, discuss some things, and then maybe talk to the woman from Malthoon. Okay. And complete our discussion, like in a little post, like, okay, well, after hearing and everything, what are we going to do? So kind of three little micro meetings. This is very much like a video game. We have like quests and it's like, yeah. speak with Catra Sabine. Speak yeah. with Come into our of your interrogation party. room. Yeah. Make a decision on Yeah. Good times. Alright, so let's let's convene in oh I didn't realize there's a bottom part of this map. Okay. Well, we would not be in the same room as the, the Molthoon people, so we'll just find an office somewhere. Yeah, you can you can find some place private and, and, and secluded for the for all of you to meet up. Okay, so once we get into a private area, Karen will speak up. So, what are your thoughts on this? Well, to start, uh, I want to preserve amicability between our group, and I think we should hear what Jessup, what you have to say first, um, before any of us add in our thoughts. I mean. Most directly, I believe it affects you as a member of the Chernisado Rangers and having been near Namathi born. I believe you should speak first. Oh, well, uh, kind of a little speechless, to be frank. This doesn't happen often. I won't lie. I think I may sacrifice my vote and defer to you, my trusted allies. I feel if Westland did not get an opportunity to vote, even though he as well may be a little biased, I think me being in a very similar situation, it would not be right for me to be able to cast a vote either. I respect that opinion, Jessup. However, uh, the council or the summit, whatever, did did allow us for the right to vote as one. And as much as you might want to remove yourself, I think that you're, you're part of our group. Your opinion matters, even if your bias exists. We all have bias. I mean, we all know Kirin. Malthuni. I am an outsider with no stake in these claims. An Orin, surely he would agree with his dwarven brethren, being from Krakadan. We all have bias that exists. That's why we're a good representative to make the choice. Jason, correct me if I'm wrong. Did which did she specifically say the only reason that they are coming here is because they realize that they're marching on Malthun now? So she said that she had ignored the horrors set upon her neighbors, and now her people and her land pay the price for her own arrogance. Her fellow general lords argue how or even if to intercede. Meanwhile, people die, hers and yours. Unless we put aside our war, we shall both be overrun. And then, and then she said, rumors claim that you know where the Legion is hiding, uh, and if you know where to strike, she can give you her sword, that sort of thing. That's the summary. I am conflicted to be honest when I found out that you know who was from you know where I was kind of open to the idea of there potentially being a somewhat of a truce and 
thinking very well it might come to this. I think now the thing that strikes a chord with me is the fact that the only reason they are coming in now is because they realize that it could be a losing war for them because it's gone too far. I didn't expect them to jump in to help immediately or to do anything, but it just doesn't sit well now that the the situation has been presented to me. Uh, Jessup, I would agree. I mean, while I'm not Nermathy, I'm from Kragadon, and it's within the borders of Nermathis, so... You know, I, I feel the same. I wouldn't I wouldn't abstain from voting just because, you know, they've had my city under siege for two years. But it doesn't sit well with me either. So the vote of the whole council rests on our divided vote as a party. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> well, like. let, me, let me try to sway an opinion one way or the other. I'm not going to pretend that I understand your suffering, Jessup or Orin. But I am aware, I believe, in some part of Malthun's aggression against Nirmathas and Kirin. I understand the complexities which lie therein. But, truly, what what is the Nirmathi end? The goal for the war? You've always been fighting for your freedom. This presents an opportunity where you could perhaps, if you're willing, leverage their desperation for a long-term peace. Now, of course, it would be tenuous at best, and I cannot promise you that Malthun would even follow any treaty signed now, but this could spend the end of a war. I don't think we really have any reason to believe that they would honor any kind of truce. And and what we're talking about is ostensibly giving them access to, well, vital information about so many different organizations within Nermathus. You're talking about giving them vital information about the rangers, about the dwarves, about the fae. I mean, you can't have an ally and keep them at arm's length. I I must disagree with you, Orin. Malthun is lawful. If we sign a truce, we will maintain that truce. Honor is above everything else. They will not break a truce if one is signed. I can guarantee you that. I know my people. We are not like the Iron Fang Legion. We will stand by our promises. And can you tell me with a straight face that every Nirmathi is lawful? I don't know anything about the Nirmathi. Uh, or Mothuni, whatever you are. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, classic. I can guarantee you that not all of them are lawful, but the ones that are important that make the decisions are the ones that will stand by their decisions. I guarantee you that. I know as much of my father as much as I loathe him. If he were to enter into any sort of agreement or contract, he would keep it. Uh, Well, even then, Kieran, who's to say that they would recognize the authority of the woman that speaks now? Do you know of her? I do know of her. When I was in the military, I served under a Lord General similar to her position. They are very high-ranking, and their decisions matter in the military. So if she says that there is peace, there will be peace. You'll take this as an insult, but I don't believe that. I, I mean, I don't know what else I can do to sway you. But as long as I live, if we enter into peace with Nirmathas, I will ensure to the best of my ability that it is... It is kept. I don't know what Sir Dak would think of this, but it's possible, Jessup, that we could provide a contingency that should a treaty be broken, perhaps some of the Knights of Ozum or members of Last Wall could render foreign aid as part of a concession. I think the other thing that you guys have to keep in mind is what it would do to our other allies. I was going to bring that up later. I, I agree. mean, are we willing to risk that, you know, I, and I don't know that this would happen, but perhaps the dwarf representative might leave. Well, morale would take a hit regardless, even among the soldiers. And to your earlier point, Arin, opening essentially military access to Malthun through Nirmath, us, that, that's tenuous at best. And Jessup, I'm sure you've met a ranger with, well, who's quick on the draw, regardless of what they might have been told to do. You see, what's going to happen, though, is if we turn them away here... Malthun is still going to involve themselves on their own if they have to. We saw the maps. The Anfang Legion has already infiltrated Malthun, and Malthun is not going to just stand by and allow that to happen. So if we send them away, they will still fight. We will still fight. And at, at that point, 
my thought is, from all I know of military strategy, is we may very well both lose. I don't necessarily see an end to this with the strength and mobility that the Iron Fang Legion has of being able to fight separately and come out on top of this. I'll just be frank. I, I honestly think our only option is to unite as one force. You see how the Iron Fang Legion has united all of the monsters. They fight under one banner for one cause, and that is why they are winning. We are separate. There's allies here, there's al uh, there's there's peoples here, there's peoples there. There's the Fey, there's the Dwarves, there's Nirmathos, there's Molthun. We're all separate. We can't afford to stay separate. If we stay separate, I fear we will lose everything. And then there will be no war between Nirmathos and Molthun, because there will be no Nirmathos or Molthun. I'm not sure I feel as strongly as Kirin, but I'm inclined to agree, and I would like to remind the other of you two this only allows them a seat at the table. It does not guarantee friendship. It does not even agree, guarantee allyship. It just says that they can sit and hear the arguments and there's time for you to negotiate. I think at the least, talking would be worthwhile. I believe we can talk to him, but I don't think that... I, I don't agree that the seat at the table means as little as you think it does. I mean, we're, we're going to be discussing very sensitive matters at the table. Just having them there is a, a large trust factor in and of itself. I recognize that. I'm not downplaying that. I, I mean, we can go talk to them, certainly, but I don't know that it's such a, a an easy thing just letting them even have a seat at the table. Might I remind you that there's already someone from Ulthun with a seat at this table? Yes, but you don't speak for Ulthun. I might. Just because you are Malthuni doesn't mean you speak for Malthun. Just like I'm from Kragadon, I don't speak for Kragadon. The rest of this council do not know that I'm from Malthun. If I were to divulge that, divulge that information, do you think I would still be afforded a seat at this table? I'm not so sure. Well, yes, because we would vote to allow you to stay. I think what he's saying is that you've proved yourself with action. But that is you, Kieran, that he trusts. It's harder to extend it. Right, but how did I prove myself? Over time spent together, we don't know. They could prove themselves. A lot has happened in the past few months. You were also quite treacherous about it too, though, weren't you? I mean, not to be not to be too blunt about this, but you lied for a very long time. Oh, I understand that. I don't discount that. And yet you're telling me that I'm supposed to trust other Malthuni. Let, let's remember, no, no discord between us. No, no, that's not what I mean. I, I'm just saying, it's. let's not pretend like these are paragons of virtue that have walked into our little council. Sure, and uh, but we could poke insults, all we could, at, at the Nirmathi for their disorganization, at Kragadan for their inaction, and at Lastwall for protecting a single front and doing nothing for so long. We're all to blame, I recognize that, but it's not helpful, because right now we're all in a situation that puts innocent lives in danger. I, I think I've made my mind. We, we have all, we are all culpable in the allowing the Iron Fang Legion to get the power that it does now. That's how I feel. I think, putting my feelings aside, if we are to attempt to have a truce and bring this Malthuni general to the table, I think it'd be wise to determine what will they be bringing to the table themselves. If it is just a mere small regiment that really will not sway any tide of war, is it worth potentially breaking the allies we have. If, however, they're bringing a large force, something that will be impactful, I think that that could, from a just strategic standpoint, make sense. My only concern is clearly they, they know that we have a way of finding the Iron Fang Legion, and I'm not keen on sharing that information with them. I'm not really keen sharing that information with some of the people at the table already. That's why we're here to make friends, Orn. Lots, lots of friends and acquaintances. And share very, very guarded secrets. It's fine. So let me bring up something that could affect these these discussions. Uh, this will be the thing that Sarah had, had suggested uh, before the session started, I believe. I gave her an option between last session and this session, just an option about we all know as players, and I think this actually did come out uh, in in game, about 
uh, her brother in Krakadan and how he uh, escaped. Uh, Jessup helped Kieran get him out of there. Uh, and I believe that they did make that uh, aware to Oren and, and Gideon. I gave her the option. I, I asked her, would Kieran have kept his brother up to date on any proceedings? And I gave options of how, how they could have conversed back and forth and, and that sort of thing. And we both, she and I both concluded that if Kieran were to keep his brother up to date, he would do so with the consent of the group. So that was what she was going to to bring up was whether or not the group leading up to this point would have allowed Kieran to at least keep his brother somewhat aware of the goings on of the Legion and, and, and your progress against them and so on. Oh, I'm inclined to believe that we would not have agreed to that. <laughs> so that is a question. Like, how did they learn? Did they mention how they even knew that this was taking place? They did not. No. This decision does not change the fact that Malthoon would have gotten this information, but it would have given a, a another alternative method of them getting the information. We we do know too that Malthoon has been invaded at this point. That yes. the uh, the Iron Fang's uh, battle lines have crossed the borders of Nirmathos, well beyond the lines of war. I think for me, well, for Jessup and me as a player, what makes a difference for me about Kieran and then with her brother or his brother, to me, it's all about motivation. Like, I guess we don't really know Kieran's motivation of being here, but, you know, he's had an opportunity to prove himself, so Jessup's perfectly fine with everything. With his brother, granted, it was such a short stint, but he knew the reason why he'd even invaded Kragadon was because they were being blamed for stuff the Iron Fane Legion did, so he was there investigating, so there was kind of that reason as to why he was there. No necessarily malicious intent. I just think for the general standpoint, it's just the whole thing. Oh, we want to start just because we realize you guys are getting your butt kicked and we're probably going to get wrecked next. So now we're going to help out. To me, it's like, well, you are you were really helping because you thought it'd be necessarily a good thing to do. Or, you know what? We can enjoy killing you guys so much that we're going to help out just so we can go back to killing you guys later. It's just complete self-preservation is kind of what I'm looking at. And That's, I don't know. I think where Orin comes from, too, in a very similar way of like, okay, well, how long has the Iron Fang Lee engine been playing hell in <laughs> This, and you just now decide to show up when they're a threat to you? Like, that's rude. I would like to point out the fact that the Iron Fang Legion's assault on Nirmathos was dud, done essentially as a blitzkrieg. So news did not get outside of Nirmathos's borders. I mean, Westland Gavrik didn't even know the Iron Fang Legion was there until Tamron was attacked. So news did not travel very far. Catra Sabine could be talking about the Iron Fang Legion attacking you, or she could be talking about her fellow Malthunis attacking you. She didn't specify what plight exactly she was ignoring. But I would say that probably even if Malthun knew right away, you'd you'd know that it's Yeah, I'm not buying that. Them sending yeah. them sending aid. No no no, hold on. Them sending aid as a national army to someone that, that is essentially their enemy would have probably taken months of proceedings anyways. So I just want you to be aware of that. Sure, but I'm just saying I'm in, in from Orin and Justin, and I think anyone's perspective is like that's kind of irrelevant. You know, like, yeah, it might take a while. Yeah, all these things. But it is painfully convenient for Malthun if their enemy is fighting a war on two fronts. You know, like that, that is only good for them until that third party uh, decides to clean up the whole team. You know, so like a as much as it might have taken time, the, the pragmaticality of anything, it becomes irrelevant when it's a matter of discussing principle. And what I'm saying is, is like a week, they found out like in a week that we were holding this conference, got all the way through the territory of Nermathis to, to attend the conference to ask for help, but didn't offer any aid. What was in the bag? Their their show of um of uh, solidarity or hope for it was a a bloody sack of hobgoblin ears. She said that many of her soldiers p paid the highest price for it. Well, yeah, I'm sure because the Iron Fang Legion attacked them. <laughs> you know, I think we need to talk to her. I'm still wondering how they got through the entire Fort Trevally with all the Rangers here up to this room. I'm still. We're going to have some words with some of the Rangers downstairs. Security is I'm clearly still lacked. still baffled on this concept, but I'll let it slide. Now, as to the point of Kieran being able to contact his brother, man, that's a tough one. 
you're giving us the conundrums, Jason. Because, like, on one hand, I'm like, am I cool with it? Is Orin cool with it? Probably not. But, like, it's also his brother. So, oof. I don't know. I don't want to play everyone's characters, but no way we reach unanimous. Yeah, go ahead and tell him. <laughs> like, oh, did it have to be unanimous in order to do it? He said he wanted the consent of the group, and it would have been way. Be- it would have been like leading up into this event. I don't think the end result would have been. Yeah, it's okay, Karen. Go ahead and do that. But maybe I don't know for I'd sure. Almost wonder, I'd almost wonder if the group would be more likely to agree to that prior to this event. I and mean, Karen would have begged you guys. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think Orin could easily be convinced of of Kieran making contact with his brother. Like, I think I think Orin could be convinced of that because that's that's his family, you know. Oh, you're you're the only one that I thought would have been the long holdout because I think no. Like, am I a holdout against Malthoon? Yeah, absolutely. I don't trust him. But his brother, like, and Kieran's told us that he's been separated from his family for so long, and I think Orin kind of has some like. Yeah, he spent a long time away from Kragadon, so it's like he has some sympathy for that kind of that kind of thing. Like he 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 can respect that like Kieran would want to talk to his brother. Well, then that leaves. Well, it's one thing to talk to your brother; it's another thing to tell them what the Iron Fang Legion is doing and where they've taken hold and all that kind of stuff. But Jessup, I think, is the last one. Yeah, but what? Why wouldn't you tell him though? Like, like why wouldn't we? Because like. Would you really expect Karen to withhold that kind of information? Like, oh, hey, by the way, <laughs> they're planning on attacking where you live. In the I don't particularly don't, but I think it's important to recognize his brother, if I'm not mistaken, is a member of the uh, of Malthuni's Imperial Army. So, I mean, Karen was a member of the army too. So, because under the same like under the same argument, I think Orin would have been fine. Like, if we had sent a missive to Malthoon to tell them that the Iron Fang Legion was going to attack. Like, I think Orin would have been fine with that and even would have advocated for it. But there's a difference between advocating that you tell someone that, hey, you're in danger versus protecting that person from that danger. You know what I mean? Like, there's a there's a difference there. I think what Kieran would have advocated for is, I think he wants to get Malthoon involved. Because like near Mythos, he's seeing how quickly the Iron Fang Legion is taking over near Mythos. And obviously, and this is no slight to near Mythos, but near Mythos alone is not really doing anything to stop it. Sure, we saved Long Shadow, but for how long? We saw the maps of how flat, like how far and how fast the Iron Fang has expanded. So at this point, as a former soldier thinking strategy, he's thinking we need to get as many people on our side as we can. We need to get Molthoon involved. And he knows his brother is high ranking in the Molthoon army. So he would have advocated, let us tell them what we know and we need to ask for their help. I think that's the direction that Jason and I were thinking this could have gone is that potentially he could have shared this information with his brother said, we're holding a council. We want Molthoon representation because we want them to understand the scope of what's happening here. And then his brother could have gone to his ranking officer, whether that be the general Lord or whomever. And then from there, we would wait to see if they would return the summons essentially. So I think that's what I was thinking is that we would have proactively reached out on this and it wouldn't just be like, oh, hey, we, we're getting attacked. So now we're going to help out. It's more like, OK, we didn't know what was happening in Nier Mythos. We see the impact now and we're willing to provide our support. Does that make sense? Long story sh- short, previously we invited them here. <laughs> it's what you're advocating. Yes, I am. Mm. But that's not that. that's that's completely that's not how the book has it. But I think that makes sense. So wait, are we are we saying that that did happen or no? You're discussing whether that happened, whether that's what we did or not. It'd be a little bit of retcon too, but yeah, I didn't want to. That's why I was like, should we talk about this before or during? But we're talking about it now. So I think I think I think from Orn's perspective, from what I'm gathering, is he's not opposed to giving the Malthoon the uh, hints and indication that they're going to be attacked I think he's just still doesn't want them sitting at the table to be pervy to all this sensitive information that they could then turn around and use as a weapon at a later date yes that is exactly what I'm advocating that like you can still share information with them like like as soon as we found the maps 
I'm all for that. We could have contacted her brother, told her what was going to happen, told him what was, or contacted his brother and told him what was going to happen and let him know like, Hey, just so you know, this is what the Iron Fang Legion's planning. But I think that that's a, it's a far stretch to say that, that Orin would support them having a seat at the table. I think a lot of that is, you know, if we advocate that that happens, then that completely changes the entire dynamic of the Malthoon just like charging in right now. It does, because if we knew that ahead of time and we were okay with it, then we don't need to confer. We would just be like, we knew this yeah. was going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> I would also just further add, though, there's an element here. How strong is Kieran's conviction to need consent of the group? Surely he could just engage in private correspondence. He would not do that. More lies. <laughs> yeah, remember, he, he, he got all, like, he went from edgelord to complete emo when uh, he <laughs> told that lie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I... <laughs> and, and honestly just out of game maybe i'm misunderstanding this but i've read up on Multhoon enough like i don't think you guys fully understand they're not some evil nation they're lawful yeah, neutral but it so literally says in their pathfinder to... wiki that you can't trust their diplomacy <laughs> well well i i um i understand your point sarah too though but i'm just i think that from the perspective of Nirmathos, I find it very difficult for anyone to have such a level head and not view them as the aggressor. But yes, the history is complicated. It was technically a civil war, but you know, from the Nirmathi side, they're still fighting for independence and facing continued aggression, even after peace negotiations, even after having won a war already, leaving a tenuous peace that just perpetuates violence in a land of conflict for forever. Yes, some of them bear hatred, but most of them, I think, would be content to just stop fighting. Not to get, like, super semantic on this, but, like, if you read back to the original rebellion that started Nirmathos, it's described as violent. So oh, the, yeah. or, the origins of Nirmathos is that they were violent against Molthoon and broke off. So, again, like, I, I don't want to bring that up here because it's it's whatever but like Nirmathos is not this pure innocent land they started it violently and so Molthun was doing what a nation would do if there's a rebellion and trying to quell the rebellion they lost and that's how Nirmathos was created but I'm just saying like Nirmathos is not like the hero of this story necessarily I think uh, there's blood on both hands no we definitely <laughs> are at least they don't practice slavery, am I right? So, I guess to, <laughs> no, they, to we don't do that this, anymore. To bring this back, if you guys aren't comfortable with retconning all that stuff, we can leave it as it is. But Kieran will make his vote plain and clear that he is voting to allow Molthoon a seat at the table. And I'll just leave that for what it is. If you guys overrule me, then he'll go by the general vote. But he thinks that would be very foolish. I think. We should talk to Katra, though, still. That was the original plan. So if we keep things as they are, we've had our moments to discuss and say our pieces. Now I think we can vet the character of Katra and determine the logistics of what aid they could render, the validity of her words. We can get a sense to get to know who she is and the sentiments of Malthuni leadership. And then, then we can go to final vote. And that's why I brought up the other thing is because depending on the answer to the other question depends on how I role play some of these characters. Yeah. Like if, if you were in contact with them prior to this, I will play them differently than if you did not contact them prior to this. It just depends on how they got the information they got. Did we come to a conclusion that we would not have been okay with that as a group? It sounded like everybody was okay with it, but Jessup hadn't mentioned about her uh, or about her contacting Kieran. her about about Kieran contacting his brother because Oren seemed to be at least persuadable um and I don't think Gideon was deposed. yeah I mean Oren's position was that you can let him know that that like tactical stuff but it wasn't that they could invite them to the table right uh, yeah no that I'm I'm just talking about like them getting clued into how things have been happening not necessarily you inviting to them, them to the table. That doesn't necessarily have to be the thing. Yeah, yeah, then Orin was fine. It's just tough for me, though, because it also would position Kieran as literally the perfect spy who could be, you know, <laughs> deliberating government secrets to a foreign enemy. And also, oh, yeah, we all let that happen. <laughs> like, yes, I'm not a citizen, so I wouldn't 
you know, there's no such structure in Nirmathas as how their government runs, but like could be technically considered treason, depending on what secrets you reveal. So that's why <laughs> I was. Treason? He's treason? not even a member not, of this not, country. Not, <laughs> treason not, is not. He's not a citizen. <laughs> not for you, for Jessup. For Jessup. Well, what would I do? <laughs> Goodness me. I said it could. He could be interpreted as that's that's a possibility. Revealing military secrets to a foreign power, even I if didn't. Uh, right. so well, you would I'm be just revealing saying. military secrets, unless you, unless you count knowing that an enemy is going to attack another person to be a military secret of your nation somehow. You know, but the thing is, if you ask a majority of legitimate rangers of, hey, should we warn Malthoon that they're going to get their butts kicked by um, Iron yeah. Fan League and Jinnazol, they're probably going to be like, oh. mom's the word on that bad boy. Yeah. Yeah. Which goes to show that they are not saints themselves. Yeah. But like, that to me is so stupid. It's like, okay, we're going to get beat by the Legion, but at least Malthoon will also get beat by the Legion so we can all lose together. It's like, what? Really? I, I'm not saying that that's the way Jessup thinks, but you darn well know a lot of rangers. Sarah, have you met people? If I'm going down, I'm taking you with me, not, you know, mindset for sure. A million percent, that would be, I would assume, the default mindset of the average ranger. Like, yeah, they're not good people. We're recognizing that. We're saying that. Yeah, I was going to say that. Nobody's arguing that Kragadon and Dermathus are the good guys. It's just that, like, Malthoon's not exactly their our, our ally. You I think know what we I mean? should do speak with Dead on Aiden's body because it's right outside. We can give him the lowdown <laughs> and get his opinion. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Can I please roleplay a dead eye and give a yes or no response? That sounds like the best thing. Let's do that real quick. Well, yeah, but he had to have died within the last week, so. Oh, so I guess let me get this straight. So Kieran had approached us to say, is it okay if he sends information to his brother? And we just said, sure, that's cool. No, we are we are discussing whether you would have allowed Kieran to give any information to his brother. We're not hand-waving that he absolutely did. It, we're discussing it, and it seemed that Oren was amicable to, like, he was persuadable. He was like, it's his brother, right? Like, if, if the Legion's going to attack his homeland, he'd want to, like, let his family know. It seemed, it seemed like Oren was on that, you know, wavelength. Gideon didn't seem to be vastly opposed. Kieran obviously would be for it. Yeah, his, his Gideon from day one, his perspective would consistently be with preserving lives. Yes, he's pledged his shield for Nirmathos and would continue to render political support for them. However, he is concerned about liberating oppressed people, even if that means they're oppressed by their own governments. He wants people to be free and he wants people to be safe. And so, um, so long as he trusted that Kieran was making a decision that was going to keep people safe and free, he he would allow that to happen. So the question would would fall to like what would Jessup say about this discussion and if you all agree that Kieran could pass on information to what extent would you be comfortable with that bare minimum <laughs> which is what I think the biggest one would be perhaps size and strength of the legion and where they had crossed borders as it related to within near Mitha. so maybe not how far north or how far east that they conquered, but how far perhaps south and southeast. Anything about how they travel? Anything about that? Yeah, it's tough. I think that that is an essential factor to understand, else some of the lines don't make sense how they could advance a campaign that quickly. Now, sir, didn't you mention that Kieran would be wanting to get his brother to get somebody to get a seat on this table? Wasn't that what you said before? Yeah, his preferred course of action is to give as much information as he can with the hopes that Molthun will help. I think knowing of the Onyx Shard immediately puts you in survival mode. The idea that the Iron Fang Legion could erect a tower, not just in Nirmathoth, but perhaps in the fields or behind enemy lines in the central country of Molthun, making sudden attacks on civilian targets that aren't well militarized because they're currently holding units and soldiers uh, along borders or doing other patrols and campaigns. So like, I 100% think that learning of the Onyx Shard, that alone Alone would be enough to be like a serious national threat. It'd be like, you know, not to pull too much from real world politics, but it'd be the idea of like a weapon of mass destruction existing and posing a serious risk to national security um, that goes beyond our otherwise difficult and tenuous relationships with each other or even ongoing war. So I can understand that Malthoon would immediately want to 
rectify that situation. That might be the the key piece of information that we let Kieran have told his brother. No. And Jason, real quick, at this point with Westland being here, I know we have player knowledge, but does the do the characters or does Westland at this point know that Tamron has fallen? Westland was leading the defense of Tamron when it fell. Okay. So he would have told us their capital city is gone. Oh, you heard that from a couple people. Okay. I think Cobb told you that first. That's like a a point of you know. That's that's a big one. Just gonna throw that out there. <laughs> so Orin knee jerked to know though. Jessup? Only on the Onyx Shard. Like I wouldn't be cool with sharing that much information. Like you could share Why? what they're because it's a dwarf artifact and it's it is a weapon of mass destruction like and i wouldn't trust malthoon to know about that they're in a highly expansionistic like kingdom that would be they, they, they could have interest boom. in seizing they could have interest in, in gaining access to the weapon themselves yeah like absolutely <laughs> not they would already know of its existence because they were blamed for its theft yeah they were like, Kragadon was like, hey, you stole this from us. And they're like, what are you talking about? So they, I mean, they know that there's a thing called that already. So well, I didn't think they knew that they, what was stolen from there. Like, I, I didn't think that. that they might not know it, what it does exactly, but they, they yeah, know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, like, I wouldn't give them, I don't think Orin would be cool with giving them that information. Like, oh, hey, you want to conquer a ton of nations? What if you could just teleport to them and you didn't have to march your armies? <laughs> that's the best Billy commercial ever. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, okay, sure. Are you tired of marching your battalion for 14 days <laughs> right? across the broken countryside of a- To avoid this discussion going in circles for another, like, hour and a right. half, how about just take, like, a minute, each of you, and give, like, short synopsis and what you'd like to vote, and then we can cycle back and say yes or no. All right, let's start with Sarah. Okay, so... I, I'm honestly lost at what we're even discussing anymore, but Kieran would advocate that, yes, he's in contact with his brother, that he shares information about the the size of the Iron Fang Legion. He would advocate, at the very least, that they are able to just show up with large armies and doesn't matter defenses, they can just pop up. And he would advocate that we get Molthun involved. That does obfuscate the role the onyx shard plays correct so orin orin would then if that's the proposal that kieran's making orin would accept that I, the only point of contention i have is that you invite them to the table to join as an ally that would be my only point of contention out of that whole thing but at least contacting his brother on board giving him all the details uh that we've learned about the iron fang legion's movements totally fine Informing them that the Iron Fang Legion has a way of transporting armies unseen, if you will, to those locations, totally fine. It obfuscates the role that the dwarves Correct. played or an artifact or anything, or that they could access this. Maybe it's a powerful magic or a spell, not an artifact that could be stolen. And then, yes, so I guess... Orin's like an 80% yes on that. <laughs> I know that's not perfect, but that's that's where he's at, an 80% yes. <laughs> Gideon would be willing uh, to take the chance insofar as, um, at the time, some communing with deities assured him that it was not wrong to put his faith in Kirin, which is, I think, the angle that he would look at it. I mean, last wall is the defending the inner sea region all the countries of the inner sea region they really take quite seriously their their holy charter to vanquish evil and defend the weak so as much as he doesn't identify as a knight of ozen himself anymore he was a former knight and a lot of his morals are impacted by that by that still you know and so i think that that would be his angle he could accept it um assuming that milani uh Ayomade, uh, guided him towards that choice okay Iomide would almost certainly be an advocate for potential redemption. And uh, the Milani, I think, wait, no, no. Uh, who was the third one? Milani and Shaylin. Shaylin, are yeah. Is Shaylin. Yeah. I think your your array of deities, I think Milani would be the only one who might have reservations about allowing you to do that. But the other two, I think, would be advocates. And assuming he's high enough level now that he could talk to Milani directly, I mean, 
she could talk to Iomade too. I mean, they are sister saints, so perhaps she could be swayed one way or another. Okay. So that gives us three opinions. Uh, Jessup, what is your short synopsis and how would you vote for this? Yeah, Jessup would be fine with whatever Kieran wants to do. <laughs> that sounds like a decision made to preserve peace in the game. <laughs> I think this situation's weird because it's like, it, it, you know, again, I know we're kind of talking back now, but if let's say that conversation had never happened and then Malthoon just charged on in here and then we're, we were kind of, as we were in the beginning of the session, I think that's where it's like, holy crap, what's going on too much, too fast. But Kieran and Jessup have traveled so much. Like Jessup looks as Kieran is maybe kind of like he, he treats him as if he was a ranger, like an ally he kind of brings him back to his day with his pod. In addition to, he probably looks at Kieran almost just like he would look at Rizrin as being kind of like a son figure as well. So if I think it's one of those where if Kieran's on board, Jessup's definitely going to do it because he trusts Kieran with his life. I mean, he, he has for since book two. And further, we're really extending trust to Kieran's brother uh, because what he does with that information, we'd have to assume that, you know, the levels of people that he trusts to reveal that to are not going to be people who will advocate for the destruction of your thoughts, you know, will hopefully be swayed to ally, to, to render aid. Oh, Jessup might not trust uh, Kieran's brother per se, but like I said, he trusts Kieran. Yeah, so so at any point. With that said, it seems like the general consensus is that you would all be comfortable with Kieran telling his brother general movements of the Iron Fang Legion that do not necessarily mean how much of Nirmathos has fallen, and that the Legion is in possession of some capability that allows it to blitzkrieg through areas and pop up whenever, not necessarily saying that it is a dwarven artifact that allows them to do so. I think that was, was that all the stuff that was and the general size and composition of their forces, that sort of thing. It seems like everybody's on the page that that would be good to, to pass on. Yeah. I've got these three key pieces of information, general movements, especially as it relates to threatening Malthuni citizens. Legion is capable of that and the size and composition. I think those three, yes. So with those three as the guiding principle, you can hopefully affect role play. So with that in, in mind, uh, you would all, the four of you would be aware that Kieran was in contact with his brother about that information. So Malthoon would have learned stuff, just not all the details. They were not necessarily formally invited to this summit, though. Uh, so that's something that that they just kind of showed up of their own accord, but it is not necessarily surprising that they are recently made aware of certain information. So that is the page that we are all on now, which allows us to begin the four of you discussing with General Lord Ketra Sabine herself. Yep, correct. Yep, I'm in agreement. We're all in agreement. We saved some time, although this is exactly what I expected for this session. So for me, I'm just like... You most definitely yeah. did not save time. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just happy. This, and the, the way I see it, this is playing the game. So it, literally no game time is lost in my Yeah, we didn't lose any time. We're just playing the game. Yeah, Yep. exactly. That's how I feel. All right. So the four of you leave the, the summit chamber and approach General Lord Katra Sabine. Who would like to speak first as you address the General Lord? You filthy Malthuni! You dirty people! Good start. <laughs> are there are there near Mothy guard in this room? There would be, yeah. I didn't bother populating the whole map, but there would be others in, in the area, yeah. Okay. Karen wants to make sure he has backup in case he, he starts attacking them. <laughs> what? Attacking who? <laughs> the Malthuni. Karen's attacking the Malthuni? Yeah, you're asking if there's guards in the room, you know, so you have backup in case you attack the Malthuni. No, I think <laughs> I think what he does is contingent on whether there are near Mothi in here, because if there were no near Mothi in here, he probably would do what a Malthoon soldier would do, and he would salute his ranking officer. But he's not going to blow his cover if there's near Mothi guards in here. I feel like Kieran is a quadruple agent. Like, I don't know what's <laughs> going on here. <laughs> and he keeps the level straight. It's, it's past triple. We we could argue that there was a private room where people could be posted yeah. up outside and then we were inside and we could tell them to worry about it oh, if well, she the, tries to kill us. The four of you would definitely have the authority to ask any uh, near Mothi guards in the room to leave if you so wish. 
So I think that we can go into a private room, tell Nirmathi. <laughs> oh yeah, Jessup, uh, Jessup will ask them nicely to leave, and yeah, probably not going to want to hear any of this anyway. <laughs> well, and how many how many troops are Mothluni troops are there? So there are eight currently in this room, but if you if you were to motion for the Nirmathi guard to leave, Katras Bean would motion for these six to leave as well. Okay, I was going to say, I'm, I'm willing, obviously, she's in a position where she could be made unnecessarily weak, but if whatever would be a fair concession for us to have, you know, equal an amount of power should things go south, but we can send as many guards away as possible. And you would know that as a general lord, her sending her out, sending off that many and leaving only one person behind is kind of a show of trust in, a, in itself. Given yes, I, I, I recognize that as a human. <laughs> but she would like as you're motioning people to, to leave she'd be like uh, if I might I would request one individual to join me here he was sort of the informant who made me aware of the legion's progress through my lands if that is alright with you get in or not and as this informant walks up he would kind of snap his fingers and undo the illusory gaze um, that is affecting him and you would see Kieran's brother Okay. Once everybody has left the room except for the six of us, Kieran's going to do a Molthuni salute in that he puts his fist over his heart and kneels briefly and addresses her general lord and then stands up again. She returns the salute but does not kneel. How many general lords are there in Molthun? Do we know that? I believe there are nine, but one of them is elected to be the imperial lord, so there's technically eight. Do they rule equally? They each have their own province that they rule over. The Imperial Lord is kind of like the president if the president was elected from among like nine nine. So candidates. they're governors, basically. Yeah. Is basically what they are. They're governors. Okay. So she is essentially one step down from being the closest thing to leader of Molthun as you can get. Without being a leader of Molthun. Well, being a leader of part of Molthun, but yeah. Those eight all have equal say and like uh, representation they they each have their area of providence or whatever that they govern yeah, so she has the mindspin province and others have other places mark when told us just kind of has like the imperial veto correct it's almost not quite feudal but it uh, it does have a if i remember like they they form a council the eight of yeah, them and much. he is kind of like the dude who gavels and says yes no veto power and all that yeah so from like a, a, a national ruling perspective, like you'd want to be elected as an as a general lord, and then you could be elected to be the imperial governor from those. Gotcha. Okay. Does Orin know all that? That's just general structure of the nation. Yeah, you'd it's, Okay. It's not like a hidden secret. No, 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 because that'll just be that'll be like one of the questions that he'll have is is probably related to that, like, you know, how much she speaks or Malthun? Like, is it just her region, or is she speaking for the whole? Yeah, and I don't know if my character knows this, which I don't think so, but um, the eight are all very different people. <laughs> yes, they <laughs> very, are very different. <laughs> yeah, very different as far as sentiments towards what Malthun is or should be. Think of them as very much existing as political rivals with different interests, goals, and everything, despite the imperialistic monolithic structure that Malthun seems there's quite a bit of internal strife actually. And I will say you know, contrary to how other people might play the game, we don't role play every minute of our characters being together and I would say that in the hours and weeks and months of travel that we've had together I'm certain that you guys would have pried Kieran for information on Malthun and right, he, yeah. he would have given it to you so he... he wouldn't have known which Lord General would come. He he honestly didn't even expect a Lord General to come, so that would be another thing he would point out is this is not something he would have expected from a diplomatic envoy. So yeah, I I would say that you guys would know the you know the structure as far as Kieran is concerned because he would have shared that information. Yeah, yeah. So you have motioned for the Nirmathi to leave and she has both motioned for the soldiers uh, behind her to leave except for uh, Raiden Teralia who uh, was her informant and you are all aware of the fact that you gave some information to him and she looks at the four of you and she gives a slight nod and says 
I do thank you for offering me the opportunity to at least speak before making a decision. So I think, I mean, I think Orin would just start in with some questions that he had, you know, like just, uh, well, it certainly came as a surprise. Uh, you know, maybe a four warning of your arrival might have, uh, made things go a little bit smoother, but you're here now. Yes, our entrance could have been perhaps better than it was, but I'm afraid there was not much time for us to, to reach here in time for the summit. By the time I, I learned of its uh, existence, I barely had two days to make my way here. Well, I for one appreciate you coming. My companions here are aware of the correspondence I have had with Raiden. And I guess he would actually name him as his rank. I don't know what rank Raiden is, but he Raiden's would probably a lieutenant. say... Okay, he would probably say with Lieutenant Trellia. Uh, this is this is official rank. He's he's unique, but yeah, okay. Yeah, he would say whatever he knows, Lieutenant Trellia. I can say I am surprised to see you here, Lord General. I I would not have assumed that you would have made the journey. Yes, well, it's a matter of good timing, I suppose. Unlike our arrival here, I was inspecting the lands near the border. And her face darkens as she's. I came across the remains of Valor and Oxbrow, two small farm communities. They'd been overrun and burned down. I didn't know who the attacker was at first. I. I will admit I assumed it was Nirmathi counterattacks, but I also met up with. Raiden here, who had been scouting on his own, and he gave me a little bit more information that the Iron Fang Legion had resurfaced, and they were now posing a great threat to my province and my nation, and that they had been harassing Nirmathos for some months unbeknownst to us. As I said before, I have kept a blind eye to the other lords' interactions with your nation, and I have only recently been appointed General Lord of my province myself, so I have not had much time to consider the political standings between our two nations, but I think now is as good as time as ever to begin discussions. And I, again, I, I do beg of you. My people suffer as much as yours do now. The past is in the past. I admit Mothun has wronged you. Yermathos has wronged Mothun, but I would like us to put our differences aside, at least for now, and save as many lives as we can. I will not mince words, Lord General. You're facing an uphill battle here. I am of the mind that you should be allowed to enter, but I am but one of four. So I would ask, with the utmost respect, that you would allow my companions to ask questions of you in order to ease their mind and help them to form an appropriate decision. Of course. I can set aside my pride here and, and humble myself as much as I must if it'll be for the benefit of my people. I gratefully appreciate your willingness to do so, as I'm sure the other two is, do as well. M my opening question has to do with the terms. Are you seeking a temporary truce against the Legion, or is a long-term peace on the table between Nirmathos and Malthun? I will admit that at the moment I lack the authority to make an official long-term peace, but I am confident that of my peers, none surpass me in ambition. Give it a few years and I will be the next Imperial Lord, Imperial Governor, and I will seek truce. The the war with Nirmathos has been too much of a tax on Molthun. It's been that way for years, but everyone in power is too too proud to admit defeat. I am not one of those. So, uh, what exactly is it that you'd be offering? I'd be offering the aid of my province, and as I said, once we have rid ourselves of this common enemy, and I have ascended to Imperial Governor, we can then begin formal talks of a long-term peace. And you guys would all notice, at least those of you with good sense motive, Whenever she mentioned ascending to become Imperial Governor, Raiden kind of gave her like a 
like a sideways glance, like a, should you have, did you just say that? Like, almost like that was a semi, not, not treasonous, but that was a bold thing for her to have said. Well, also, I implying that she's willing to accept foreign political aid to gain a position of power because they could have a vetted interest in subterfuge and espionage to improve her standing. So, yeah, fun. I want to roleplay a spy in Malthude for her next campaign. Forget curse. <laughs> the spy, so fun. Raiden would actually speak up at this moment and say, if you'll uh, permit me, I'd like to at least make it clear my part in this event, if that is all right. Speak. Thank you. After getting information from Kieran, I realized that the threat of the Iron Fang Legion was much, much greater than I ever thought. I began to do some personal scouting uh, through the borders of Nirmathos. I was actually not too far away when I learned of Tamron's fate not long ago. I have a sort of speciality in gathering information, you see. I immediately sought out someone that could provide aid, I suppose. Someone in Molthun that would be able to listen. And Ketra Sabine happened to be in the right place at the right time. And also, perhaps the perfect candidate of the General Lords for me to speak with. I had gained information about a summit. I will not divulge where I gained that information. My sources, well, I suppose in Nirmathos they wouldn't be punished too greatly for having leaked the information, but nonetheless, on principle, I gained information of this summit, and it was by my request that Lord Sabine made the trek here with her soldiers, and it is perhaps by my lack of urgency in gathering this information that we had to arrive on such short notice. As for how we arrived this far into the fort of yours, I did happen to drop a couple names that I was aware of, hoping that they would get me in, um, even if I did not actually have contact with you, Jessup. We had spoken before, and it seems that you have a lot of trust and your name carries weight here. Ah, uh, but does he know I lost that weight? I was just going to say that. Oh my gosh. Because Jessup's a lot Get out. Now. <laughs> Get out of here. That was one of the correspondents. Oh, by the way, Jessup is a dark elf now. Uh, yeah, don't ask. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, uh, Jessup would, um, of course, well, it is a pleasure to see you again. And then he'll look at uh, the two of you. May I ask you a upfront question? And I would appreciate your honesty. Ketra replies, by all means. What do you, or how do you view the people of Nirmathos? Ketra thinks for a moment, and then she eventually speaks and says, Like many of the others in Molthun, I do hold the opinion that Nirmathos, for most of its existence, was a holding of Molthun, longer than it's been independent. But I think enough time has passed and enough blood has been shed that Molthun should see the writing on the wall, as it were. Nirmathos is never going to be a part of Molthun again. Even if they were to squash any rebellion here, it would never be permanent. I think we are far better suited to coming to some sort of diplomatic relations beneficial to each other rather than wasting resources on a fruitless endeavor. I hold no grudge against the people of Nirmathos. My interest is solely on my own people, and I think it is for my own people's benefits that we set aside our differences. Just, just kind of nods. That's just all the questions that I have. I'm ready for my vote with the party. But beforehand, Neil, Jessup will turn, look at Kieran. Kieran, I would like a private word with you when we are done here. Kieran will nod. I have also made my decision. I thank you for your time, the both of you. And uh, he'll use their proper titles in referring to dismisses. He doesn't salute them, but he, he recognizes a soldier of work. All right. Uh, I guess my last question would just be, what do you expect from us? What are you hoping to gain out of this? Well, according to Raiden's investigations and his talks with you, Kieran, and the rumors that I have heard, 
The four of you have uh, sort of led the charge against the Legion. You have the most information on where to hit them and how. I must admit that I am sorely lacking on intel at the moment. I've lost, as I said, two farming communities already, probably others that I'm not even aware of. And I don't know where the enemy is, I don't know where they come from, all I know is that they can come from anywhere, and it is difficult to fight back against such an enemy, but you seem to have the information on how we can fight back, and you're also fighting them from this front. If we can combine our efforts and fight from multiple angles, we can perhaps wear them thin. And then, once they are thin, perhaps even while their focus is on my territory, the four of you could find some way to strike at their leadership, wherever it is that they are hiding. Put an end to this, cut off the head of the snake, so to speak, and then when the rest of their forces crumble, we will both be at the, the availability for peace, longer term at least. Fairly sound strategy. In short, I lack a strike force that you possess, and you lack an army that I possess. But looking to the future, I suppose I do have one more question that comes to mind. I have no doubt of your ambitions, grit, or determination, um, but how many among your peers would think like you or a lie to your perspective as it relates to Near Mythos? If pushed, I could easily convince... She takes a moment to think. I could convince at least half of the General Lords, I think. The others would be a bit more difficult, but that would only be a matter of time. And Mark Teldas is getting up there in age. He will need to cede his position at some point, and with enough backing, if I can take his position, then those who still hold opposition won't have much of a place to stand. And again, Raiden seems visibly uncomfortable. <laughs> I love it. Because he's technically not... He doesn't work for her, technically. So what she's saying is, is again, very bold. And he, but he would he would not actually need to say, as much as I am hesitant to say the things that the General Lord is saying, she is not wrong. She does hold quite a bit of influence due to her lineage, despite being a newly appointed General Lord. Cool. So happy that I've got uh, my character's quote-unquote adventuring retirement story set up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so have you all said your piece? Jessup has. Gideon has. Yes, sir. Then I suppose you can return to the courtroom and give your vote. What do you think your vote will be, everyone? Actually, could Jessup have that convo quick with Kieran? Nope. Okay. <laughs> we should we should just whisper you, Jason. We just whisper our votes. Yeah, you so can do cool. that if you. Yeah, the, you can whisper me your votes while uh, the two of them are discussing. Um, in favor or against? Kieran, a moment. Certainly. I know, of course, now with everything and the Legion and where we are and your brother rallying some aid for us to come help, it uh, kind of changes, I feel, that your motivation for wanting to end this war with the Iron Fang Legion. But curious, we've been traveling along together and I look at you like a brother in arms, like a ranger, even though you may not want to admit it. Um, maybe even kind of a son figure. I do look much younger now, but my heart is in the right place. Curious, I don't know if we ever, ever had the conversation. What were you looking for? Why, why did you come to Nirmathas? Oh, well, I wasn't really looking for anything in particular. I think I may have told you before that my family life is complicated. I lived with my parents, my brothers, and my two sisters. I was the youngest. My grandfather also lived with us, as did my grandmother. And my grandfather was something of an anomaly in our family. He went through the same rank and file, I guess, that the rest of us did, but upon leaving the military, he traveled. He led the life of an adventurer for a time. He came back with stories of different lands, including Nirmathos. 
And I don't know if I ever mentioned this, but my grandfather had the same powers that I do, the same draconic powers. So me being the only one of my siblings to inherit that, it bonded me with my grandfather. So in the times that we were together, he not only helped me cultivate that power, but he also shared with me his stories, which many of them were in stark contrast to what I was taught by my father. He spoke of the near Mothy people, and much of what I heard was different than what I learned growing up. After a time, my grandfather became sick suddenly and passed away, and I have reason to believe that his death was not natural. That sparked something within me, and I began to recall his stories and feel that Perhaps what he spoke of was not as crazy as maybe my father would have us believe they were. So when the last straw fell and I left, I decided I wanted to find out for myself what the Nirmathi people were like. And that's why I came here. I will be honest, there is part of me that is also trying to understand my draconic lineage more and there's been word of a blue dragon that has flown over Nirmathos and Multhun although I don't necessarily believe that has anything to do with my family but there were stories my grandfather told me of our ancestor dragon being killed by a black dragon and As you are well aware, we have met two black dragons. I don't know if either of them were the ones that killed my ancestor dragon, but part of me wanted to be able to go back to my father and show him that I took down the thing that, as he would call it, shamed our family. I don't think that's really the true reason why I came here. I think it truly was that I wanted to find out for myself if what my grandfather said was true. And so far, a lot of what he said has been what I've experienced. But don't get me wrong, there is still part of me that that loves my home. I love my sisters. They're still in Multhun. I don't know what's become of them. And it scares me to my core to think that something might happen to them because of the Legion. Even my brothers, what remains of them, I honestly at this point, I'm not sure which of them outside of Raiden are still alive. But I cared very deeply for my siblings and I don't know what I would do if I found out that something had happened to them. Something that perhaps I may have been able to stop. I think once you're done speaking, you can clearly tell Jessup's taken back. Um, I didn't really think you were going to divulge that information, so that's it's kind of like, whoa. But Jessup would respond with, Well, dads, am I right? I uh, want to wish you luck and hopefully finding your blue dragon ancestor. I certainly hope they are nothing like the dragons we met before. I'm kind of done with dragons, I think, in my lifetime. But I appreciate everything you've done for me and for my country. And now, in a roundabout way, can support this endeavor and help you protect yours. I appreciate you telling me this. It's honestly the least that I can do after all the lies I told you, Jessup, and how I involved you in this back in Kragadan. I still feel guilt over that. But I truly appreciate your help. And know that when this is over with the Iron Fang, if we are able to beat them, I'm going to do whatever I can to ensure that there is peace between our countries and that the peace will last. And I feel like this is a crucial step in that direction. I won't lie, I thought your first step would have been this far. You know what? I will definitely be (laughs) allocating some time to that. But unfortunately, I fear that we have a bit more misery in our future before we can do anything like that. Jess will kind of smile and nod. 
and then he will poorly attempt, I think, to salute Kieran the same greeting that he saluted his Malfuni brethren. Okay, and Kieran, if you like get down on one knee like that, Kieran oh, no. will like. Oh well, I don't know if I go that far, but at least the whole. I was you know, like, "Wow, yeah. Jessup, you're gonna kneel to Kieran and make this." Wait, no, oh, yeah, Jessup goes to do that. Oh, that's right, we don't do that here. So I'll do everything but the kneel. <laughs> yeah, I was saying he made he made a big deal when Gideon did that. Little did you know, Weston was peeking around the corner, and he's like, (gasps) (laughs) (laughs) "It's the whole like soap opera, like little kids, uh, like show where he peeks in and he sees his love interest kissing his best friend. It's like, (gasps) I can't believe it." (laughs) Yeah, and I think Kieran would explain to you, not that you would have done the kneeling, but I think Kieran would have explained himself, and he would have said that the the kneel comes when you're addressing senior officers. When you're addressing someone of equal or lower rank, you don't kneel, you just do the salute. So you would have just done the salute. It would have been awesome if Jessup went to do that kneel down and then Kieran looked, oh no, Jessup, we don't do that here. <laughs> we don't do that here. <laughs> <laughs> Full circle. That's canon. That's canon. Yep, that's exactly what happened. Jessup, Jessup, no, we don't, we don't do that here. Ah, well, since I've had this new form, I haven't felt quite like myself, but... And he'll kind of do the jovial jump and give you a hug like he normally does. The the good old Jessup. Well, seems we have a vote to cast. Gosh, Westland is going to be very pissed at me. I trust that Westland is a wise man. I what, think what are you he, doing here? This was a private conversation. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, we weren't, thought, we weren't I invited you, to this. Yeah, I, it's, thought it's, you, I thought you shifted afterwards yeah, when you no, said well, we no. came to a, He just assumed Orin's vote. <laughs> <laughs> he, he sees Jessup salute, and, Gide- and Gideon's just like, oh, guess it's over. He walks right <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, I can whisper Jason, but I think... It's kind of I have three votes so far. You can whisper if you'd like. Mine? Yeah, if you I want. Think you or know. you can do it normal. Oh, I, 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 th- I think everybody kind of has a good Plot idea. Plot twist. Jessup says no. No. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like that Oren held out, though. Stuck to his guns. I think it's like a Jessup be like, hey, guys, do you mind if we all vote out loud? I vote yes, but I'm going to say no so Wesleyan doesn't get mad at me. <laughs> Also, I should say for those listening, Justin wrote Oren is still against, and we were all like, I, oh, yeah. dude, I don't think he whispered that. <laughs> and he's like, That's okay. <laughs> Didn't mean to. Didn't even want yeah. to. <sighs> yeah, I don't I don't think that there's any confusion there. I think Jessup was the one that had to be convinced because Gideon's an outsider and he sees you know, he's got a more removed perspective, and as much as he's pledged loyalty, he wants peace. Kieran obviously has got his background, which informs his opinion. Jessup was the one who had to be swayed, and I really like that Orin, the stubborn dwarf, stuck to mm-hmm. his guns. He could have been convinced. It's just that, like, she's not very convincing. Like, <laughs> I'm going to be the imperial leader. Well, okay, that's nice, but you're not today, so right. I can convince maybe half of them to join me in that. Okay, well, that's also not horribly convincing but even so okay. he is currently in possession of one eighth of all of Mil- of Molthoon's military might yeah. yeah so even for a short term ally that's a substantial no 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 ally. I'm just saying like I'm not downplaying like her military like you know contribution what I'm downplaying is like the whole peace talk thing like of oh yes when I'm when I'm imperial leader I'll, I'll make a peace treaty like okay well there's a lot of steps that go between today and and that day so yeah i think that i faith hope peace and love i think are the four tenets the four pillars for milani's faith so leaning into hope uh i think gideon was easy to sway yep so i think we all have an answer is that correct yes yes sounds like it the majority voted for uh including ketra sabine in the war summit so is it? Do, do we just say we all just cast the vote, or can we say something before we vote, or just right thereafter? What do you mean? I guess Jessup's idea is, is I think he's kind of come Damage to the conclusion. Yeah, I think basically, I think <laughs> I, mostly because of Westland as well and his tie to the Rangers, I think that once they cast the vote, he himself also would want to explain why they voted the way that they did. Other than I think just voting, like, oh, here we are. And then, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I think, yeah, yeah damage control, at least more, like I said, Westland side. 
Sure, yeah. When you return to the chamber and and sit down, you would have... I mean, like, one of you would have to say what your vote was, of course. Um, so you'd have an opportunity to give your reasons. I think Kieran would advocate that Jessup be the one to deliver the vote because oh, he's a ranger. A hundred percent. And I think there's a very telling, non-vocal exchange, though, between Gideon and Garvik. Or Gavrik. I mean, I think Orin would try to talk to the dwarf and just reassure him that he voted no, but that he should keep an open mind. <laughs> the majority casted yes. I said no. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, I mean, legitimately, as part of damage control, yeah, Orin probably would tell him, like, listen, I was outvoted. I voted no, but, you know, we're in the situation we're in, and we should probably make the best of it. Yeah, you can't change the past. You can only go forward. And really, we're, we're, we're playing political exchanges here, you know, so it makes sense. All right. So you rejoin the council, and Jessup, you can re- relay the vote to the other attendees and anything else you'd like to say. Basically, yeah, Jessup would uh, stand, and I would like to address the summit. We have come to a conclusion with the vote. We have determined that Ketra Sabine will be allowed a seat at the table, and we will request aid from the Malthuni army. This decision does not come lightly, but we are all here for one reason and one reason only, to stop the Iron Fang Legion. If they win, we will not have a scuffle anymore between our two lovely nations. I think we must put our pride and our history behind us and look forward and hope that potentially this can broker some sort of peace or at least an understanding of our two nations. As you give that uh, vote and that uh, reasoning, you see that Sir Doc nods heartily. He is, he is, he sees this as a wise decision and it seems that he is always an advocate for peace amongst enemies when there can be peace. So he seems very much in favor. Uh, Santilla Savros just gives a very, like, slight nod of approval, and and that is that's it. That's all she does. Gosmer doesn't really comment at all. She's barely paying attention to this whole exchange. Uh, she lost interest as soon as she voted, and uh, Obsic just kind of gives like a, a, a huff, and then Oren, of course, gives his. You know, short. I don't know if he would be. It would probably just be like an aside to him, maybe like a, a hushed voice. Y- yeah, not like a, a formal. I voted no. <laughs> I <laughs> While standing stand on the trail. <laughs> Good day, sir. No, I mean he would just give him like an aside of like, you know, I voted no, but you know, let's let's. They seem to be in good faith. And so he would. He would just again. He he gives like a bit of a huff, but he's like, well, well, well not to be done about it now, and. Westland just gives a look over to Gideon and doesn't re- doesn't say anything, but gives like a knowing look, and that's it. As they seem to be on some sort of hopefully trustful agreement. <laughs> and with that, the second day of the summit proceeds from n- midday onwards. The second day is called Uninvited Guest, by the way, if, if you were wondering. That is the theme of the day. And... Now that everybody has set, well, not settled, but talks have commenced again, you all have the opportunity to do your influence checks or your uh, discovery checks and sense motive checks, whatever you'd like. You you had sense motive to everybody except for Katra Sabine, who just joined, of course. So it's just discovery or influence for pretty much everybody except her. So um, real quick on that, though, too, just part of the gamification of this, we don't know how many influence we need to win correct once you hit a certain threshold the attendee will give their formal alliance to you uh none of them have done that yet okay but they'll tell us like when we cross it then we'll know that we did it you will you will be aware when that happens because it'll be like a formal agreement that is made so it's not like a oh you've made 16 successes but you don't know if that was enough it's not right, like right. That. Like you needed thirteen. Like if we were just secretly distributing them and hoping yeah. for the best, I wasn't sure. It's like, oh yeah, you you succeeded. You convinced him on day one. You just wasted your time from that point onwards. That's not how it goes. Gotcha. So yeah, you the four of you can do as you wish. Do we know who we've already done the discovery checks with? So you have done discovery checks on no one, 
You have used sense motive to figure out the unique influence checks you can use on everybody except Katra Sabine. And you have influenced Obsik, Gosmer, and Serdak. Serdak, we got two as well. And Gosmer, and you got two. It. And Gosmer, we got two. Yes. Okay. But you haven't done discovery on anybody. So again, discovery gives you a plus four on influence checks. So I think after seeing Sir Dak vote in favor, I think Kieran would probably want to talk with him. And you mentioned that one of his checks was profession soldier. Yes. So Sir Dak is profession soldier, diplomacy, knowledge, religion, or bluff. All right. So you'll have to help me. The profession soldier is the influence check. The discovery check yes. is just sense motive or... If you wanted to do a discovery check on him, it would be knowledge religion or knowledge nobility. Oh, okay. Well, then I will try a knowledge nobility to, in, uh, sorry, to discover him. That sounds weird, but... To You're discovering discover his interests. Yes, uh, that. So I'll do knowledge nobility on uh, Sir Dak. Okay. My check is a, oh my gosh, a natural three for a 15. I'm so bummed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, again, you, you hold off on rolling because Jessup does have that thing he can do, by the way, if you have forgotten that he might have wanted to do. So, oh, well, okay. that thing where he gives you a plus six on a skill check, he might have, I'm not saying he would have done it for you, but he might have done it for somebody. Yeah. Also, don't forget that you have a plus two against humans. What kind of bonus is that, Josh? Sacred. Sacred. Oh, okay. So make sure because mine's a um, competence bonus if I did it. Well, she wasn't rolling any of those checks, so that doesn't apply to her, but yeah. And the terrain he'll pick will be building. <laughs> <laughs> building. War Summit Chamber. War Summit Chamber. That is oddly specific. <laughs> yeah, a little bit more specific than typical favorite terrain. And then, yeah, randomly, uh, Wes was like, let's go have this outside today. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess if you guys don't mind, we could just discuss what rules we want to make so then I could potentially try to help someone. Yep. Yeah, so I already did my discovery check. I didn't get it, but I will be planning to use Profession Soldier to influence him. Well, it's discovery or influence. It's once one or the other. The sense motive well, is free. Well, then I'm, I'm done, so I can't <laughs> do anything more. Yeah, I can't help you with uh, Soldier anyway. Yeah, so... Pending what the others do, Jessup can choose to retroactively give you a bonus or not, but it depends because he might want to help Oren with his work on the other dwarf as well. So we'll see what everybody wants to do and then Jessup can say what he plans and then we'll continue. Okay. I guess I was confused. I thought it was I thought it was both. I would have just done soldier because that's six higher, but that's okay. That's fine. If you misunderstood, you can redo this, but Yeah, you can do the sense motive and the influence, but you can't do the discovery and influence. Yeah, so again, to clarify, doing a sense motive on any attendee, you can do once per day for free. The influence or discovery check are mutually exclusive, and again, you can do once per day, but an individual attendee can only be influenced once per day. So you can't all influence the same person unless you're aiding another, but uh, you can't do a discovery and an influence at the same time. It's one or the other but you can roll a sense motive on Catra if you'd like as well. That's that's fine. So um, that's how that works. I was going to roll a sense motive on her. And I think we decided too, Jason, as well as if one of our characters does discovery today, every subsequent day, any character doing an influence on that specific character Wait, gets the plus four. We, we yeah. have to convince her to, to join <laughs> Catra, the lady that barged in and said, I want a seat at this table. You still have to influence her? Yeah, I mean, well, you, have I to influence, you have to influence Westland Gavirks, too. So you have to influence everybody here. Oh, yeah, everybody here okay. is giving you the opportunity to host this summit, and they have given you enough trust to say, we, we trust that you can lead us, but, like, you do still have to convince them that the thousands of lives that they are putting in your care will be used correctly, or else they might change their minds. So, yes, you do still have to influence. 
this is abstracting i'm assuming things like concessions and agreements and stuff like that like it is abstracting various uh concepts that would actually go into this where people might need to provide yes, favors you know, compromises from, all that favors stuff. compromises money re- like all that things these are just abstracting the details as far as su- securing their support yeah yeah we would have 100 percent gotten sabine's influence automatically but it wasn't a unanimous vote one person voted against her so now we have to convince her to bring her army i stick by my (laughs) can we aid another on this sense motive or should we just roll our own i would say just each of you could roll it individually given the conversation that you've had with her i want to try to gauge with a 20 okay all right, I oh, say, oh, so one of the things I bought was an iron stone that bumped up my wisdom. So now my wisdom is a 12. So now I have a one in sense motive instead of a zero. So nice. get sick. ready for this. Nice. 12. <laughs> okay. So we have a 20 from Gideon, a 12 from Kieran. Anybody else doing that or, or no? Well, I was. didn't we already do sense motive on Westland or no? Yeah, you have a sense motive on everybody except for uh, Catra Sabine at this point. Oh, can we still do that on her and still do an influence on somebody completely separate? Yeah, the sense motives are, are free. Okay. I, I thought you had to do it to the character, like you could do it to the character you're trying to influence or discover, not a different one. I mean, I might as well roll it because there's no harm, so. Yeah, there's no harm. 39? 39. 39. Okay. I, I, you you two added together don't even touch this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me gloat. This is my moment. Are you even going to bother with the sense motive, do you think? Or... No. No? Okay. So, both Gideon and Jessup succeed on the sense motive, and you have a a pretty good grasp of who Catra Sabine is as a person. She is a very ambitious politician. That much is clear right, o- right off the bat. And she has her eyes set on being the next imperial governor. That much she did not hide. That It's very clear. You could tell that she was, in fact, deeply frustrated that the rest of Molthoon wouldn't come to fight the Iron Fang Legion as quickly as she did. Uh, It seems like she had mentioned that they were deliberating, so she must have sent some sort of message, maybe a sending spell or something, saying, hey, we got problems, and then they probably responded and be like, oh, that's Let's talk about that. Um, you could tell that she was kind of frustrated that there that she was the the fastest to take action, even though this was a kind of abrupt bit of information she gained. You can tell that she is somewhat reserved and observant, and she is keenly aware of the conflict between Nirmathos and Molthun and how and the position that puts her in. But even when faced with such adversity, she's clearly exhibiting a calm grace to her. You think that if you were to influence her, in addition to bluff or diplomacy, you could attempt a profession architect or barrister or a knowledge engineering. Interesting. I'll even give you her class level, not her class levels, but the class she is, because I think it's cool. She is an investigator. So she's super OP and her perception is like a plus 50. Best class investigator. Uh, So yeah, those are your options for Ketra Sabine. Now you can all decide. It sounds, Kieran, so given the understanding of its discovery or sense uh, of, or influence, would you have, do you think, still gone for discovery or would you have gone influence? So I guess let me just clarify this. So we we need to influence everybody in order to get everybody's support. And yes. yesterday, Gideon already influenced Sir Dak. So there's really no point in me influencing him again. No. because So you got two successes to influencing Sir Dak. That was clearly not enough to get a formal alliance, though. You do need more successes. You don't know how many, but you do need more successes. Discovery gives you a bonuses, gives you a bonus on influence checks. Influence checks are the things that you need to get eventually. Okay, I'm so sorry. This whole thing, like, I had a completely different understanding of how this works. And and you said, I just want to make sure clear, if we, like, tip them over the scales, like, on day two, they will immediately say, these guys are awesome, full support. Like, we're not waiting until, like, day five until we're like, oh, give us all your summaries of what you want to do. Okay. If you, if you make 
extremely good headway and per, into influencing one person, they will give you their support quicker than the others. Yes. All right. So again, I will influence Sir Jack with profession soldier. That is my intention. Kieran's locking in that action. I cannot help you, Kieran. Who's next? I was debating on if I should try to um, do, uh, was it Gossamer again? Just see if we can knock that out. But I, I almost feel like after everything that transpired today, want to see what I can do with Weslin. Okay. So Katra, what skills did you say were relevant for her? Uh, so like everybody, bluff diplomacy or profession architect, profession barrister, or knowledge engineering. Oh, I don't have those. <laughs> so so basically, if you know how to build stuff, or if you're a lawyer, you'll be right in good company. No takers? I I could. I just think it more awkward if Jessup immediately like ditches Wesleyan and starts talking to the new Malthuni chick that nope, popped yeah, in. Yeah, you can do. Like, oh, you can, okay. Yeah. You can talk to Wesleyan. His uh, to remind you, diplomacy, bluff, or survival are the three options for Wesleyan. I'll um I'll let you talk to him. I will try to talk to the Malthuni woman. I think that would make sense. I'd like to talk to Sir Dak, but if um Karen is gonna, then I'll split up. I think Dak and uh, Gideon have already talked at length that they're pretty much in agreement and have expressed most of their points to each other already. Yep. Okay, because I mean, I was going to say, if it makes more sense, I can try, like, I would have to use diplomacy on Ketra, but if it makes more sense... I have a pretty okay sense, diplomacy. I have 19. It's not great, yeah, but... It's mine's okay. 18. It's the same as my soldier, so... I would use soldier, because we know the DC is lower. Okay, so then I'll stay with Sir Dak. All right, so we've got two locked in there. Uh, well, three. Uh, well, Jessup, you didn't say what you were rolling, but you were leaning towards Westland. I was, but I'm almost, yeah. I really want to see if I just want to get Gossamer done and over with. Full support from the Fae. Um, I know that's a guarantee. I, yeah, I'm, I'm still just debating if I want to do Discovery or if I want to do uh, an influence with Westland. But yeah, I'm going to target him today. Okay. A sc- discovery is the same check. No, discovery or different checks. If you want to use a discovery on Westland, it would be knowledge, geography, or survival. And that's to get the plus four, right? That's to get the plus four to future influences. Correct. Yes. Yep. That's what I'm thinking. Yep. If you wanted to discovery on Ketra Sabine, it would be knowledge history or knowledge nobility. Well, because my thought is, I the only thing I could do really with Westland is diplomacy, which is I think we determined that's a higher check than what their specialties would be, which for him is survival. I don't think any of us have a good survival. Depends. That is not necessarily the case. It is often the case, not necessarily. All right. Well, I'll still determine that. So what's Orin going to do? He'll still try to influence the dwarf. Probably pacify and smooth things over. What are you rolling? History again? Uh, Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I guess if you want, we share the wealth. I can... um, I can give you my omnipresent uh, mentor if you want for knowledge history. Sure. So I'll do that. So I'm, I'm not going to mark it. It takes four ranks, but so that'll give you a plus six to your roll. And you can do that to one person per day? Yeah, I, I don't think Jason would let me cheese it and let Orn roll and then give the plus six to another one and then plus six to another one. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just hand wave the rest of this. I don't <laughs> care how the feat works. That's not how it works. Yeah, so, well, that's why I didn't I didn't want to do that because I'm like, nah, that's a little too... You guys are already complaining about Jessup already. I don't want to break him more, so... Oh, I'm not complaining. I think it's great that he can do this. I just, I don't want it to be that far. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, and I'm kind of assuming that I'm giving it to because even though yes we're doing one check rolling it's kind of hours or or you know that we're spending for the whole day so I wouldn't yes. have an option to quickly bounce around all right in a similar fashion I just want to make sure I got a thing that would do this ability but I'm assuming because of the length of time we're going to ignore that or yeah this is kind of like how disease works like the disease is over a full day so yeah yeah, this this is a once per day thing, but even then, it seems like you would, it's representative of multiple checks. Typically. Yes. Uh, so everybody seems to have an idea of what they're doing, and omnipresent mentor has been provided. So we can now just go down the line. Uh, we'll just go Kieran first with his profession soldier with Sir Dak. Okay, here it goes. Profession soldier, twenty eight. Nice, Ooh, pretty good roll. Good roll. Twenty eight. 
Profession Soldier is the easiest check for Sir Dak, so not only do you succeed, you actually succeed by five. Nice. Oh, Getting boy. two I needed successes. That. that puts him at four successes. And you uh, actually are able to broker a formal alliance with him today. <gasps> Yay! Good job, nice. kids. Yay! So you walk up to Sir Dak, and you, as a soldier, you appeal to his knowledge of tactics and fighting, and you're like, you realize that uh, if you come up from the down from the north, and if we come in from the the west, that sort of thing, and you're giving the strategy of this, and you might even tie in a little bit of like the tenets of the inheritor because you you probably have heard a little bit about him from Gideon. You're able to involve him in a very in depth strategic discussion, and he's like, he says, you know, your foresight is well refreshing really i hold nothing against the namathi people but their tactics can be a bit disjointed but knowing that someone like you is leading the charge i think that we can really make the most optimal use of the soldiers at either of our disposals i think i could quite easily get ourselves a uh, cavalry from last wall and get some mobility on our side for a change and you're able to broker an alliance with him and last wall it's funny because this reminds me of the Wrath of the Righteous computer game when you're getting troops on like the crusade management thing and like whenever I get cavalry units I always disband them. <laughs> 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 I don't like the cavalry. <laughs> we can bring that. Uh, actually, Sadak, how about we don't do that? <laughs> Perhaps Have you seen some paladins instead? The paladins would be great. Of course, they're going to be paladins that are mounted on their celestial horses. Oh, Dang it. <laughs> okay. So, yes. So, you have succeeded with your uh, your four influences against him were enough. So, Sir Dak is on your side. Next up, we have Oren. Oren is rolling a knowledge history, once again appealing to the clan uh, legacy of Obsik, and he's got a plus six bonus this time. Hi, yeah. Well, still 20. not great. Is that including my plus six? That is including your plus six. Oh, I was going to say, hey, you, you get it by five now. If that's including the six, then that is, uh, that is again, just just barely hitting the DC for his easiest check. But it is enough to get one success nonetheless, which is good. So you're two successes on Opsic. He hasn't offered any formal brokerage yet, but you do think you're making progress. Next up, we have Gideon. Gideon was attempting a uh, something on Catra Sabine. I can't remember what you said. You it's got to be diplomacy because I don't have engineering knowledge. So you're doing an influence. Yeah, I think we're going to do an influence as opposed to getting a plus four on a future check. On yeah. all future influence checks, yes. And that's not just for you either. Yeah. That would be for everyone. Yeah, so once you discover her interests, you could let everybody else know. And so then future influence checks, as long as you like incorporate her interests, you get a bonus on your influence check. And which ones would those be? Uh, discovery for her is knowledge history or knowledge nobility. Oh, maybe in the future. But right now, those roles are pretty low. <laughs> okay. With only a plus six. I can add more competence later to those, but not for today. So I'll just try to influence her with a diplomacy okay. check. Diplomacy against Ketra. Uh, I think the angle of discussion will be trying to bridge differences and reassure her that the Nirant Mathi people, although they won't be happy about this, um, at the end of the day, you know, aid is aid and they're united in wanting to not let people die. All right. Let's see what you roll. Ooh, pretty good. 36. 36. Yes, that is quite good. You are actually able to succeed. Diplomacy is one of her hardest checks. So you do get one success. Oof. I'll mark that down here. So you think that she's receptive to your uh, approach here, but she is a little bit hesitant since you are clearly not from Nirmathos. So your words only carry so much weight when it is in regards to how the Nirmathi people will react to anything. But she's not necessarily disregarding what you say, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and he would obviously elaborate that and, you know, say, despite being a blah, 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 you know, there's a lot of abstractions to have there, but makes sense. Get an influence. All right. So that is one success for you. And last but not least, Jessup. It was a rolling diplomacy, something. survival, and what was the other? So discovery against him is geography or survival. Influence is diplomacy, bluff, or survival. 
Uh, well, I guess diplomacy and bluff are the same. Actually, no, technically diplomacy is better. Not that I bluff him. So yeah, I'll do diplomacy, and I think the angle, uh, obviously, Jessup's going to put in is, you know, talking about what transpired today. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be thrilled to chat about that some more. Right, yeah. All right, go ahead and roll diplomacy. <sighs> Pressure. Ha! Oh, nat 20, 45! Wow. Woo, baby! All right, well, I will say, because you chose to allow Catra Sabine, the DC for him did increase, but a 45 is well and away above even the increased DC, and that will actually get you two successes against Westland. Nice. So you speak to him about what happened, and you can tell that while he's not terribly excited about the course of events, he does clearly trust you, and he agrees that he will see this through, and he will, to the best of his ability, not cause any hindrance to a potential, even temporary truce with Molthoon. He witnessed the downfall of Tamron himself, and he does not want to see that happen again in, for instance, Long Shadow or the few rem- remnants of, of Near Mythos. And so with your urging, he, he is willing to, to stand by this. Yeah, and I think Jessup would just want to make sure that he's aware that, you know, the decision he made wasn't easy, but his heart and everything he's doing is for the betterment of Nirmathos. Like, that's just the only reason he's doing it, understanding, obviously, the issues we've had. All right. And with that, all of the influence checks have been done. The second day's proceedings come to a close. Everyone returns to their chambers, rather exhausted from the in-depth and long discussions that have gone on, the negotiating and and all of that. And they rest, and the next morning return for another day. The third day, you can tell right off the bat, is kind of marked by... Well, the theme is Edge of Civility. You can tell that while it begins much like the other two days... Uh, Sabine's appearance has left the attending members somewhat paranoid and defensive. Uh, None of them are hostile or anything like that. You have done a good job of smoothing things over, but there is just an an underlying uh, uh, tension that really anybody would have known would happen. And there's, even if they say that they are on board with it, it, it's hard to put down certain biases. So there's a little bit of tension, but it is so far amicable. Throughout the course of the day, nothing particularly disturbing happens, so you can basically just go straight into your influence or discovery checks again. There's there's nothing notable beyond the general discussion that occurs on this third day. Okay. I mean, Oren's going to do the same. Okay. Same thing from Oren. And do, um, Jason, out of curiosity, uh, if we don't max out their uh, influence with us, but we have at least raised it some, does that still help? Technically, it is all or nothing. Okay. This is your chance to convince them or not, is the sort of thing. And we don't know how many days we have, right? You don't know. You don't know how long this will take. I don't think that I really have anything, like any good influence checks outside of the profession soldier. Let's see. Let me remind you of some of the options you have. I know that appraise and profession merchant were the one lady. Yep. So you, you'd probably be good at certain discovery checks at the very least because um, there's a couple knowledge and abilities, religions, histories for okay. those. Don't you have knowledge nature, Kieran? As a plus five. Well, yeah, but uh, Gossamer, I've already done two and I guess we don't know how many, but hypothetically you need three successes. And again, you can aid another if you'd prefer rather than rolling your own check if you don't think you'd succeed on your own. Yeah, I can do that. What do you guys want to do? And I can potentially aid. So Oren sounds like he's going to do another knowledge history. Jessup? Or Gideon. Sounds like Gideon knows what he's doing. No, I was just going to say, I, I would undersell how useful diplomacy is also just as a backup option. Yeah, we just don't know because it might be the generic option if the DC is a lot higher or not. Well, you certainly know it's high for Santilla Saffros. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of like it just being 
again, one of the things that most people could roll, so it's probably a bit higher than some of the specialized skills. And that's the thing, it's kind of metagaming, but it's like, you know, we already have a couple successes with the Dwarf, the Fae, and then with Westland, so it's like, if we don't target them until we can max them out, and then we just try to switch, it's kind of for nothing, really. But also remember, you can only influence one person per day, so if you don't influence Santilla at all, you might end up with only two days left and not have enough chances to convince her. That's that's what I was going to say. I was going to say we should spread them out, and I was going to influence Santilla, maybe. Hers were appraise. Profession, merchant, appraise, bluff, or diplomacy. And Kieran lets you know that she is a tough nut to crack when it comes to diplomacy. Bluff might be the angle. But I feel like that's another one of the generic ones, isn't it? Bluff or diplomacy can work yeah. on any of them? Bluff or diplomacy works for any of them. Yeah, but nobody has a praise or profession merchant. I have a six and a praise. Yeah, I don't have any ranks in it, so I can't give anybody my bonus either. I have a seven and a praise. Just everybody aids another in a praise. What if I try talking to the dwarf, Orin? I have knowledge history prepped and ready to go for today. I got an eight in it. What's yours? Sure. Uh, unbuffed seven. So my unbuffed eight is a little a little bit better. So I can try that. Is your omnipresent mentor, is that a competence bonus? It is. Okay. That would only give me a plus four, so I would think about maybe using that elsewhere and hope for a high roll. What were the discoveries on that, dude? Okay, so the discovery checks for obsec are appraise. And that's it. Okay. <laughs> I could always... Oh, if you if you try to influence with a skill on somebody, you can't do... That person can't do the same skill on that person again, right? So, like, the fact that I did diplomacy on Centella once, I can't try again. No, you can. You can try the same check over and over again. That's what Oren was doing. Oh, right. Okay. Because otherwise, some of these people, you'd run out of checks pretty quickly. I'm going to try diplomacy on Centella again. <laughs> diplomacy, huh? Okay. Yes. If that's the case, I might do my omnipresent mentor on you. Okay. To see if we can get at least a success or two out of it. Okay. So that puts Kieran talking to her. I'll talk to the dwarf. Don't do that, Jessup. Okay. Because I, one of the items I bought was a circlet of persuasion, which is a competence bonus. So don't, don't waste your bonus on that. Cause I'll only get a, like a plus one, which if you want to give me a plus one, it's still a plus one, but I'm just saying I have a plus three competence bonus to diplomacy as it is. So, so, Satia, so Kieran's going to talk to Satio then? Yeah. Oh, were you were going to do that? Wait, I'm yeah, sorry, I mean, because I don't, I thought you were talking I don't know who like. else I would, who I would have a better check with than her. Do you have survival? Uh, I've got a four okay, in survival. Mind. I have a seven in diplomacy and a seven in appraise. You know who would have been good at survival? I know, he's dead. <laughs> I think, um... <laughs> Well, that's ironic, isn't it? I guess he wasn't. <laughs> I think Orin should do the appraise with Santra with the competence bonus. Santa. That's pretty big. Santa. Santra. What a, Severn, Santilla. Whatever is. Santilla. Her husband's name is Santa. I'll try the dwarf. I only have an eight, but we'll see what we can do. Then, Jessup, you're thinking Gavrik again with survival? No, I was just saying I could get it up to... Uh get it up higher um no I, th I think i might just try to see if i can knock out uh Gos gosmer again are you gonna do it yeah i think that's yeah yeah of course <laughs> that's what i'm gonna do <laughs> oh i forgot we could do that yeah kieran you could always duel her yeah, i think kieran was the one that dueled them back in you were before. you won you won I think you before. were yeah yeah i feel like i have to try that then because i could use that as a a point with her and just say you know i a while back i met some of your kin and we dueled and it was a glorious contest. Didn't they shrink you, too? They did. Yeah. They yeah. shrunk. That's yeah, awesome. They shrunk your... Yeah, they just shrink me. I think that's a good yeah. angle. Your initiative is also pretty high, isn't it? It is. He steps out of the room, casts a bunch of buffs, steps back. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, I was like, stick around. I'll uh, cast just some spells for you. Uh, Wrath? Wrath sounds good. Uh, good hope? Sure. I think to preserve the honor of the duel, Kieran would not do that. Yep, obviously. All right. So Kieran is going to try to duel Gozimer. Gideon is going to do a check uh, against Obsik. 
Oren, did you say you were going to try to do an appraise on Centilla? Yeah. All right. And Jessup, uh, did you say what you were doing? Uh, I was going to do uh, Gossamer, but uh, Kieran will do that. Um, I'm actually going to try to do uh, Celine. Okay. Good choice. Good choice. I like that. Sabine, yes. Or Sabine, sorry. Okay. Uh, and who's getting Omnipresent Mentor? It sounds like the best choice would probably be Oren, but... Uh... I think so. I agree. Uh, sure. Oren, take a plus six competence. He's the only one without a competence bonus that wouldn't stack with it, so... And wait, what's he trying to do it on, though? Appraise. I can't. I don't have any ranks in appraise. Okay, so how about Diplomacy? Yeah, I can only get my bonus Omnipresent Mentor. Um, I mean, I can't with Inspire Competence, I think but not with the omnipresent mentor i think that specifically only works with something i have ranks in it says yeah you must you must select a skill in which you possess ranks yep so if you can't do it on orn you could just do it on one of the others and it'll just be I a could, bonus. Uh, it's silly i could do it on gideon i mean i know it's only a plus i mean it's a free thing i mean take the plus one or not you know i don't know it's a plus four for me oh, okay because i have a i got one of the magenta prisms and i attuned it to history and diplomacy today okay so we all know what's going on. So let's do Kieran first. So for this duel, I have the barest of bones stat block possible for her. There's no damage involved, obviously, because you're not trying to kill each other. But I have initiative. I have AC. And that's, that's pretty much all that matters here. So the way it's going to work is we're gonna both going to roll initiative and go in turn. And whoever overcomes AC first is declared the winner of the little sparring duel. Okay. And my objective is to win? I, I, ideally, yes. <laughs> okay. Well, I didn't know if it was one of those situations where, like, sh- if she wins, it, you know, boosts no, you, camaraderie. No, you want to impress her. I see. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's uh, okay. <laughs> see how this goes. Go ahead and roll your initiative. Do I get a bonus because I've fought them before? Um, no. All right, initiative is oh my gosh, Sarah. A five. Well, Sarah, stop playing Delta Green. We need high rolls. <laughs> yeah, wrong, wrong system. I can't tell you how frustrating this is. It's quite sadly frustrating. that does not beat Gozimer's initiative of twenty-seven. I would so, have had to roll a natural nineteen to get a twenty-seven. So, yep. So she will be going first in this little duel. So. She will make her attack. We're just doing one attack per round, by the way. Otherwise, this would take a while because she does have several attacks. So let me roll. I have no idea what your AC is. 26. Ooh, that That might miss. That is exactly my AC. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. So she darts out quickly and is able to get her, like, diminutive-sized rapier right underneath where your armor would protect your exposed armpits. And she just kind of puts it right there and she says, ha ha, looks like you weren't as quick as us fae. I'm, I'm just not going to do anything anymore, guys. You guys got this. I think I'm doing more harm than good, so. You didn't do anything wrong. Kieran's going to come talk to this guy. <laughs> Out of curiosity, <laughs> what would your attack roll have been? Uh, just a melee. Uh, wow. Yeah. Okay. A three for a 19. Ooh. Yeah, that so, wasn't going to hit. So. Cool. Oh, goodness, Sarah. I feel you bad can for you tell, You can tell from your exchange with Gosimer that she is actually a very competent fighter. Just a little behind the scenes. I won't tell you what level she is, but she is a multi-class fighter duelist prestige class. So basically, she should have been a swashbuckler. Yeah, swashbuckler was around when this book came out, and the duelist prestige class is stupid compared yeah. to swashbuckler, but uh, that's what they decided to go with. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, it was worth a shot, so yeah. that's my round for today. You can tell simply by offering the duel, you have reinvigorated her quickly dissipating interest in this entire endeavor. Uh, so that at least is a, is a good sign. Even if you weren't able to impress her much, she at least got excited about what was okay. going on. All right, so that is Kieran. Oren, you're rolling your appraise. Let's see. How about some money? Hiya! Hey, that's a roll. 21. Orin, you're talking to Santilla Savros, and you're kind of trying to approach this from the monetary value of this whole alliance and what that could bring her and her order of Calistrad. But you quickly realize that her knowledge of money and commerce far eclipses yours. 
and you are not able to make much headway. She has a rebuttal for every single point that you bring up, uh, and you're you're not really able to to do much in the, the way of influencing her today. All right, that brings us to Gideon. You are rolling against. I've forgotten already. I think it's Catra Sabine. No? Yes? The dwarf. The dwarf. Ah, you were sitting next to Catra, so I was confused. Okay. So, yes, so against the dwarf, you are rolling uh, a check of your choosing. So, Orin, did you say failed? Yes, Orin. Orin did not meet the DC to appraise with uh, Scintilla. Rough. Uh, we'll go history. Okay. Rolling a history against Obsic. Ugh. 21. All right. Well, as we have already determined... History is the best one to roll. So you guys have consistently done the bare minimum to convince Obsik. It seems that his interest in his lineage is enough that even with not the greatest of uh, points being made, he is convincible. And you do get one success. That puts you at three total successes with Obsik, which is exactly what you need for him in particular. Hey. So as you as you uh, approach him and you also give some flattery towards his his esteemed lineage, he seems even more impressed because you're an outsider who's talking him up than Orin who'd who'd know about it, and he'd be like, "Well, I suppose if if my family name precedes me as much as it does, I I could hardly afford not to offer some aid now, could I?" And uh, he will pledge the allegiance of uh, his clan and of Kragadan as a whole. Great. Securing the Knights of Ozum and the Dwarves of Kragadan. Thanks, Gideon, for stealing my thunder. I softened him up for you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, buddy. It was the same way with Kieran and Sir Dak. It was... <laughs> right? Gideon's the closer. He's the closer. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, no. Jessup is a finisher. He cannot steal that title from me. Also, it was the inverse. Sir Dak Sarah. Right, right. Got yeah. Yeah, but what I'm saying is like Orin softened up the dwarf. Yeah. Gideon softened up the Knight of Ozum and then other random people just came in and won them over. <laughs> All right. That brings us to the final roll for day three and Jessup. What are my roll options again? So for Sabine, if you're trying to influence her, it's architect, barrister, engineering, bluff, or diplomacy. All right. Well, Jessup. Hmm. So, uh, what do you think of our architecture and engineering that we have here in Nirvathas? <laughs> so, Jessup is going to, well, I'm going to take a nat 20 like a dirtbag, so it's going to be a 37. For uh, engineering. Uh, correct. Because okay. I don't have architecture. So. Yep. You can talk about the infrastructure and the roads and stuff. All right. We use gravel. We have many tree houses. <laughs> Engin Lots of them. Engineering is uh, a middling one for her. It is not her highest. It's not her lowest. But with your roll, that is enough to beat it by five, getting you two successes with Ketra Sabine. You kind of talk about the infrastructure of Nirmathos and how it could stand to improve, but at the same time is almost optimal for its geographic standing and how the people of Nirmathos function as a nation. And she agrees with you. She thinks that your use of forts and tree houses has been rather ingenious, especially in your continued guerrilla warfare against Molthoon. Uh, and she agrees that if there is a future peace between the nations, some more well-established road could grant quite a bit of commerce between the two nations and would allow the tensions to hopefully in time die down as they as the peoples begin to know more about each other on a personal level. So that is how you approach that, and she is receptive. So I believe I, that shows me as her being a total of three successes, because I think somebody did one yesterday. Diplomacy yep. myself, yep. So three is enough to win over Catra Sabine. Yeah! Nice! So we got everybody with Westland. <laughs> <laughs> the Knights of Ozum, the Dwarves of Kragadan, the Imperial Army of Molthoon. We need the aid of the Fae, the War Profiteer. I don't think the War Profiteer is going to happen, honestly. Yeah, you've made no headway with Santilla. She is, she is, oof, she's hard to negotiate with. Um, Westland and Gossamer, you've both got two with, so you're doing okay with them. One thing I will say, Jessup, um, we don't need to do a long role play with this, but because you succeeded in winning over Ketra Sabine, she actually gives you some special information. So as you're talking with her and you've come to an agreement and, and she says, 
I, I do appreciate, especially with you being a citizen of Nirmathos, being so receptive to me and my position here. I know that Mothun has done much harm to your people, but I, I do genuinely hope that in the future we can change that dynamic, even if only a little. You have trusted me, and so I would I would like to give you my trust as well, and I will hesitantly tell you of the shame of my family. The ruler of the Mindspin province prior to my appointment was my brother, Vetrigan. Many years ago, he was waylaid by Azirsi and her bandit forces. At the time, she wasn't quite the force that she is now. He had to plead for his life, and as I said to my shame, he offered the hobgoblins work as mercenaries in the border war. Even if he did it out of desperation, it's as clearly it has gotten much out of hand. He used our family connections to give them training and equipment. At the time, it wasn't out of the ordinary. There were many other monster regiments that were under the patronage of other families in Mothun. There was no reason to think that the Iron Fang Legion would be anything special. But little did we know, Azersu would move on to be a powerful force in and of herself, turning her ruthless raiders into a, a true army. We didn't realize it at the time, but she had been embezzling funds from our family for her entire time as a mercenary. And shortly before her disappearance, Vetrigan also disappeared. I'm led to believe that she killed him. That is how I took the position in the Mindspin province, and that is why I have so recently been appointed, is because my brother was taken abruptly. Blindsided, you could say. I only learned of his involvement in this once I came to power, and it wasn't until recently that I realized that the Iron Fang Legion was even still a thing. But I've now learned that my family plays a much bigger role in this than I thought, and I do genuinely feel shame and guilt of that fact. I hope that my efforts can do at least something to make up for the faults of my kin. And she will basically, she just divulges the the secret of her family that she hasn't told anyone before. Just would um, come back and you didn't have to tell me anything, but I'm honored and glad that you did. But everyone gets an opportunity to right the wrongs in life. I'm glad I can potentially help you seize that chance. She thanks you and you are able to end your conversation on a very amicable standing despite the differences in your upbringings. So, despite the tension of the day, no incidents occur, and over the course of the hours, you all notice something very interesting is that the tension slowly begins to lift. In fact, to all of your surprise, by the end of the night, just before everybody retires to their individual rooms, you actually see Wesleyan Gavirk chatting with Katra Sabine. And on occasion, the two even have a, a light chuckle between the two of them. It seems that your insistence on Wesleyan keeping an open mind at least gave him the opportunity to talk to her and give her the chance. And it seems that perhaps the two have more in common than either of them thought. And perhaps that bodes well for the future. And with that, the day ends. Moving on to day four. The opening of day four, much like all the others, a dull proceeding of recap over the previous day. And you're all quickly able to see that even with the temporary influx of excitement that Gossamer got yesterday with the duel, the proceedings are definitely taking her toll, their toll on her. And partway through the day, she lashes out. She takes flight from her little wooden stump that's on the on the chair and booms in a kind of shockingly loud voice for her small size. She says, We waste precious time sitting and arguing over petty details. While you quarrel over every fraction of silver, the Fey of the Fang would have learned an onyx tower within our realm. Everyone should be ashamed that while we talk, the Acrecial Court alone takes action to push back against the Legion. And you can see that after, after she finishes her rant, she storms out of the room and the the knight Sir Doc Santine is actually the first one to to rise to his feet and he says I will 
speak with her. Clearly these proceedings are taking a toll on her. Uh, perhaps she could use a good friend to talk to. It seems that she has dealing with her own things. I'll see if I can't bring her back. Just give me a moment. And he also exits after her. And then as he leaves, Westland kind of emits a heavy sigh and he simply states, let's retire for an hour or so. It seems some members of our uh, in, in, in attendance here have uh, more important matters to deal with. And with that, the four of you can do your influence checks. Uh, Gossamer and Daxartine are not in the room at the moment. If you'd like, you could try to seek them out, or you could continue your influences and such with the people still present for today's proceedings. It is whatever you'd like to do. Would Orin get a bonus with Gossamer or no? For being a dwarf, you mean? Yeah, yeah. I would say probably not, even though dwarves are in high standing with the Fae at the moment. She's very uh, quick to forget things. Sure. As Fae. She seems flighty. Yeah. Yeah. So any favor that you gained, probably just with her specifically, is kind of like, she's like, oh, yeah, I, yeah, you did a great thing there cool so it's it's not like she's ungrateful but it just seems like she's very i guess selfish wouldn't be a bad word to describe her she's she's focused on her own issues so i don't know if there'd be a necessarily a a bonus there okay so are we able to try to seek gozimer out to try to talk with her for the day or no yeah if you want to talk to her for the day you are free to track her down and see if there's uh, any sort of uh influence that could be done for her today that's totally fine And what can we roll for her again? I know it's the duel, nature, and then what was the others? Yeah, so for Gossamer, it is a duel, it is a knowledge nature, or uh, bluff diplomacy. Gideon, you want to try to duel her? I don't know if she can hit your AC, can't she? (laughs) I was thinking about fighting, dueling Gossamer. I wasn't sure if it was an appropriate time because I'm not sure she could hit my AC. It's a 39 right now. Maybe, maybe not. I was also inclined, though, that pretty much there's three left. So one of us should definitely be rolling to aid another. And um, I'd like to secure Weslin Gavirk. Should kind of be implied. I don't want to lose on the military and financial support, though. Mostly financial support from Scintilla. I would almost double down on another appraise check. But if it... you think we were outclassed? Is that what you were implying with the appraise? I was just saying that Oren's role of a 21 very much did not compare to her knowledge and expertise. I mean, it, and what, what do we have to roll for discovery on uh, the warmonger there? So discovery for Santilla Savros is, oh, you'll love this, sense motive or perform oratory. <laughs> oh, we should have done that. Immediately. <laughs> yeah, so getting a plus four could be helpful. We don't know how many days we have left, though. So if we only have one day... And, well, and that's what I'm thinking, if you guys are good with it. Uh, to me, it makes sense that potentially Gideon can go and try to duel Gozmer if she want, if he wants. He has probably the best chance, just based on his AC. Whether he can hit her, that's a different story, but... Yeah, that's a different story indeed. I can try to uh, diplomacy, um, you know, in this case, on uh, Westland. Kieran, if you want to aid me, because you have a good aid, and then Orin, if you want to maybe do a discovery, because if Gideon's right, and this is the last day, whether we get one success or two on her, I don't think it matters, so getting a discovery could help get a much higher bonus, or one bonus or one influence on her and then we could try to get two the next day but it's hard to say I'm good with that yeah I don't think we're going to be rolling high enough to get three though so if there is really just one day it's going to be tight if there's two days getting a uh, higher discovery now for two other checks that would be optimal that's what I was thinking yeah I just I bet you there's probably only one more day well then I guess we'll get a plus four and see if we could roll like rocks I really doubt it, though. But I'm fine with that, though. So what am I doing? A discovery or an or a influence? I leave that up to you, man. I think that I I personally see either way being viable, a viable option. Because if, if, if Gideon's, or if jo- well, if Josh is right, and there's only one more day after today, if you can get one influence and we can get two tomorrow, potentially we could seal the deal. If we secure Gavirk and Gossmer today, we can aid another on a check tomorrow with the plus four, with the plus two from everyone else. And if we succeed by 15, that'd be a godsend. But if we succeed at least two, then on the last day, we'd have one more chance. But I don't know. Is aiding another a typed bonus? Nope. So, yeah, we could do something sick. We could do, hopefully, somebody could do an omnipresent uh, mentor 
Then we can do a bunch of aiding. Maybe we, and with the discovery, we can get some bonuses. Honestly, if you can get a discovery and I can do omnipresent mentor, that's a plus 10 to someone. And then you can aid on three of us. That's another six. That'd be a plus 16. And Kieran can redeem himself with a nasty diplomacy roll. So Gideon is going to go after Gozimer. Oren is going to attempt, it uh, sounds like a sense motive discovery check on Santilla. Jessup, uh, Kieran? Actually, Kieran, Kieran what's, your, um, what's your diplomacy? 18. Okay. Yeah, if you want to aid me, I guess. Okay, I will aid you. Should she aid you or Oren? I don't think uh, Kieran has a very high sense motive to aid. I have a one. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can give... Uh, well, I could do that because I can give the unpresent mentor to Oren to give him the plus six for sense motive. And then Kieran could aid me for the plus two. Yep, let's do that. Okay. Can you aid me in the duel? <laughs> um, I will give you inspire courage and as soon as you leave the room, you lose it. So yeah, sure. <laughs> No, he's going to fight her honorably despite his best interests. All right. So um, seems like everybody knows what they're doing here. First up, we will do Kieran is aiding another. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, so go ahead and roll your aid check. Well, it's an auto aid, isn't it? Yeah, it probably is. So 25. 25. Do. So she or, or he will aid Jessup. Oren, go ahead and roll your sense motive with the uh, omnipresent mentor. So that's a plus six? Yes. That's not bad. I have a 10 sense motive, so... So I'd give it a 16. That's... Yeah. Should get it. All right. Discovery. Nice. 33. 33. Boom. You are able to discover her interests. So you find that Scintilla Savros really appreciates a good metaphor in speeches or negotiations. So any future discussions you have with her, as long as you guys put some nice wordplay in there, you'll get your plus four bonus on your influence checks. Interesting. All right. Brings us to Gideon. Okay, so Gideon, you uh, try to find Gozimer and uh, Sir Dak. Go ahead and roll me either a diplomacy or a survival check to try to track them down. Diplomacy to like ask people, did you see where they went, or survival to? We'll uh, we'll do a diplomacy. Okay. Twenty five. Twenty five. Okay. It takes you a little bit of time. You're uh, maybe like an hour or so looking around trying to be like, hey, did you see them? And they're like, oh yeah, they went over that direction. And then you go over there and there's like, did you see them? And you're kind of following their tracks for a bit but you do eventually find them uh and you find that they are sitting at the on the bridge one of the three bridges uh out of fort trevally just kind of like sitting over the edge looking into the the river below and you see that they are engaged in a a bit of a drinking contest and both of them by the time you get there are already somewhat inebriated uh you approach and you kind of offer to be like oh uh, like you're you're talking to them, and uh, I don't. You might not immediately offer to to duel Gosimer, but uh, no, not in this circumstance. As you approach, Sir Dak actually kind of holds up a hand and he says, and you can tell he's he's somewhat inebriated himself. He says, "Gideon, my friend, uh, we are having a very serious discussion here, and I don't think this is a, a discussion that we need to be having with anyone who's still sober. So, if you'd like to join our conversation, then I think Gosimer would agree. You'll have to partake." And he holds out a a flask. <laughs> if it would please you, I suppose I could venerate Caden Kalen himself. All right. I will warn you. I am not one to hide things, even though Gosmer thought it was a good idea. Be prepared when you drink it. He'll look to Gosmer. Strong brew, then. She uh, gives a, 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 a bit of a smirk and a wink. You can see that Behind her facade, there's still some stress, but she seems to be getting over it pretty well already with Sir Doc's company. Company? Company. Wow. All right, then. To the accidental god, camaraderie amongst mortals and each of the ways that we struggle, we're united in this. May he bless me with luck. And uh, he'll swig the whole thing. All right. Go ahead and roll me a fortitude save, buddy. You got it, boss. 30. 30. All right. You take a big swig of mulberry milk. Just so you know, mulberry milk is not milk at all. It's rather a fermented drink made from the milky white juice of young mulberries. Uh, it's a favorite secret ingredient for the Acrisial Court. It has some interesting effects. You succeed on your fortitude save. So for the next three hours, you get a 1d4 bonus on charisma checks. You gain 1d8 temporary hit points, and you take a 1d4 penalty on wisdom checks. But since you succeeded, you are not subject to an irresistible dance spell for the next five rounds. 
<laughs> That's what happened uh, to Frampton. So uh, I see. As you down this drink, and the two of them both look at you, wait for a second. They see that you don't immediately break out in some sort of jig, and they both kind of nod and says, "Well, I shouldn't have expected anything else from a fellow former knight of Ozum. Your fortitude is quite impressive, don't you think so, Gosimar?" And she says, "Yes, uh, I." Quite surprised by by this. Uh, seems like I'm in quite the good company of drinkers. And in fact, because you managed to down the glass without failing and dancing, you instantly gain a success at influencing. <laughs> nice. And uh, that's you, pretty good. You would get future bonuses on influencing either of them, but that actually finishes the alliance with both. Uh, you already had one with Zoxanpeen, and now you have it with Gosmer, so there's no need for future bonuses, but b- you've impressed her with your drinking fortitude, and so she uh, actually lightens up quite a bit and, and apologizes for her outburst, and she says that she has just... She finds it very difficult to weather the dull proceedings here that have been going on. It's 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 very much against her nature, and um, being in your company has has loosened uh, her up a little bit, and and so like I said, she apologizes and, and promises to behave better in the future days. A little out of character, Gideon will take the line to be playful uh, with her a little bit, and he'll definitely like validate her feelings, make her feel reassured that like, yes, it, 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 even though you outburst, like that was an okay feeling to have, that was appropriate, and then he'll uh, kind of be like, if you want, you can try to take your frustration out on me, and he'll just total defense and let her try to hit him because <laughs> I don't think that she can. <laughs> it might not be possible, except for a nat 20. Yeah, a natural 20 would definitely hit you, but um, yeah, so you you have a, a good conversation with both of them, and uh, you can tell as the time goes on, they're both going to stay there probably a lot longer than you probably would want to, but you think that after a bit, you've you've done what you needed to do, and so you can leave them to their continued uh, drinking, which will go on for a while. And finally for today, we have Jessup, who has been aided and is rolling. Can he succeed? Uh, yeah, I'm probably just going to do diplomacy again. Well, obviously, because that's what I got aided on. So, And this is against Westland, right? Am I yes. Right? Okay. Yes. Ha! Ooh, that's pretty bad. A natural 29. two for a 29. We got a uh, aid coming in too, right? Oh, that, that, that that's the aid in there. Okay. Luckily, diplomacy is Westland's easiest check. So even with the boost for uh, Ketra being there, you are able to get one success for oh, Wesley, gosh. which does get you to three. Can I know what the DC was out of curiosity? Uh, the unboosted DC for his diplomacy is 25. Oof, they just narrowly scraped it. Bluff and survival is 30. So we have three with him? Yep. Yep. So he offers the formal, he basically hands over control of Nirmathus' army to to Jessup. Jessup. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Great. Now while Malthun puts a front against the Iron Frame Lingagen, I will swing around the back and take them from the other side. <laughs> Full flank! So, you are able to make more progress on day uh, four here. You have convinced everyone except Santilla Savros, who you have not convinced even in the slightest as of yet. And once more, everybody goes to their rooms, except for maybe some who are still drinking. They probably get back late. And the next morning begins, and we will begin next session with day five of the summit, and I'll just clue you in just for some little fun behind the scenes. The theme for day five is tragic news. (gasps) No. We'll see you next time.